Hey guys, Double J, Jeff Jarrett. Need to call a timeout real quick here. I wanted to tell your listeners what I've been telling my world listeners for a while now. It's about all the incredible things happening over on adfreeshows.com. An all new edition of The Insiders is here. Conrad sits down with author and historian Keith Elliott Greenberg to look back on his time with the WWF during the golden era of wrestling. You know, I wasn't working for, you know, the JCP magazine, or I wasn't working for Vern Gagne's magazine as, you know, everything was imploding. I was working for Vincent Kennedy McMahon, and I was watching the uh, the company expand, and I was watching talent I've been reading about in the other wrestling magazines arrive on the scene. Adfree Show's members recently chatted one-on-one with the hardcore legend himself, Mick Foley, for the first edition of Ask Mick Live. Is there a particular place that you get the Foley flannel? Uh, yeah, I do. I go on Amazon and I type in Buffalo Plaid. Um, Buffalo Plaid is the one that has the, like the even square checks. And I order them, they run small, so I wear, <laughs> I wear the 5X. Uh, yeah, and I've got, uh, if anyone's been watching Most Wanted Treasures, you'll see that I'm literally getting by an entire season with three long sleeve flannel shirts, a cutoff flannel shirt, and about five different t-shirts. And that's pretty much it, brother. Hey, that's just a small taste of what Ad Free Shows has waiting for you, including a brand new perk, getting to join in on the live recordings of the shows with four levels to choose from, see for yourself why Ad Free Shows is the best value in wrestling today. Sign up now at adfreeshows.com. That's right. Sign up today at adfreeshows.com. Welcome to WHW Monday. Tony Schiavone and Conrad Thompson. Jim Crockett for Starcade, 605 NWA. TV title, Cajun Omni, the Bunkhouse Stampede. Flair and Horseman, Garvin, Bogey, Magnum, Dusty, Express Tag Team. Turner, Bond, and Mid-South Joint World Championship Wrestling. Talking about the great years of World Championship Wrestling, the NWA and Jim Crockett Promotion. Tony and Friends North, they win. Look, Shivani's back again. World title split off center stage. Bischoff, Disney, Hogan, and Nitro. New World Order and the Crow. Thunder Russo, Arcat Champ, Vinnie Mac, Simulcast. Tony's back with Conrad, not your classy podcast. Watch a lot, try not to laugh, Lois rules, cat back. This wasn't the initial plan, Tom Ziggs a good looking man. Klondike Bill, make a tip. Tommy, you come over here. What happened when? WHW Monday. And now, let's go to the ring, and here's your co-host. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to What Happened When? With the voice of your childhood, Tony Schiavone. Tony, what's going on, man? How are you? I am so glad on the video open uh, on our YouTube page, our YouTube channel, that they showed Bozo hitting me in the face with a the pie. I, I think that's one of my defining moments of my career. And it's also symbolic of your relationship with Lois. So we're excited. We got that in there. Thank you, Bozos, for tuning in. It's WHW on YouTube.com. And today we're doing something pretty, pretty, pretty good. We're going to be watching Unforgiven 1998. This is a very interesting time in the Monday Night Wars. Of course, this went down in May of 98. uh, Or actually, this was April of 98. So right around the same time that the 83 week streak for Monday night wars comes to an end. Nitro takes their first L in 83 weeks. And, uh, man, there's a new King. There's a new sheriff in town. Stone cold. Steve Austin is here. And the rest of the undercard is interesting. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, and we'll talk about the rumor and innuendo also catch you up with all things going on in current wrestling. Join us though. Won't you, uh, pull up season one, episode one of unforgiven. It's Unforgiven 1998. Get your big cock out. Season one, episode one. And we want you to go to 47 minutes and 18 seconds. That's 47 minutes and 18 seconds. Uh, Tony, we've got uh, a big show here. What we've skipped big so show. far mm-hmm. is Farouk 
and Ken Shamrock and Steve Blackman taking on D'Lo Brown, Mark Henry, and Rocky Mavia. Mark Henry, Rocky Mavia. Yeah. Wow. I, I, who, who'd he ever beat? Who? And then next, <laughs> we had Hunter Hearst Helmsley uh, beating Owen Hart. And now we're going to pick it up with the third match. And I think you're going to like this. <clears throat> The new Midnight Express mm -hmm. wrestling the Rock and Roll Express, yeah, on a WWF pay per view in 1900 and 1998 of our Lord and Savior. I can't believe this is a real thing. Mm. It's uh, 47 minutes and 18 seconds in season one, episode one. Tony, I'm all locked and loaded on my side. Are you ready to rock? Yeah, I'm locked and loaded. Let me go to my right page here. Dun, 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 dun. We're going to do a little countdown. And before we do, I want to give a shout out to everybody hanging out over in the peanut gallery from ad free shows. You know, we often say Tony that you, you get the shows early and ad free. Yeah. Well, you also get to be a member of our live studio audience, whether you're on the WHW Patreon or on adfreeshows.com. shout out to uh, Devin Dowling and John Hickson and Roger Fowler. And what's up for uh, Hey, Darren's here. Nate's here. Uh, Brian's here. Bobby's here. Josh is here. Greatly appreciate everybody showing out. Shout out to uh, Brian. Of course, Eddie Prather couldn't do it without you guys. Eddie Prather's here. Yeah. What the hell? Oh, by the way, uh, for all you, uh, Mamba Lukes who are, are with us, uh, we are recording this on a Sunday, yep. uh, that airs on, of course, on Wednesday. Yep. Uh, and uh, I want to let you know that I'm going to be at, uh, I believe seven o'clock tomorrow night. Uh, the 22nd of May, I'm going to be doing a, uh, ask Tony anything live on, on ad free shows. So how about that? You, you get Tony and he gets to pick his brain at adfreeshows.com. So Tony, I'm picking your brain. Yeah. I'm 47 minutes and 18 seconds of unforgiven yes. 98. And you yeah. normally around this time have a bit of a countdown. You got a countdown for us. Yeah. Well, you want to do our regular countdown here? I want to do whatever you want to do, baby. Here it comes. Oh yeah. W.A. James E. Cornette. Well, I don't get this. There was speculation that we may have a bonus match tonight. Been speculated on all day. And Cornette certainly uh, decided many of Cornette's greatest battles and uh, some of his greatest triumphs and tragedies have been in this facility. And what's during the Greensboro Coliseum, Tony. Uh, okay. You know, show no respect. You are still the ugliest bunch of people I've ever seen in my life. Right. I guess there's some idiots here that think that the greatest tag team in wrestling is still the Rock and Roll Express. Mm. Well, I got news for you. We are going to spoil the Rock and Roll Express's homecoming right here tonight in Greensboro. Ladies and gentlemen, I present the second coming of a great tradition. They are every mother's nightmare and every schoolgirl's dream. Bombastic Bob, Bodacious Park, the new Midnight Express. So Tony, you've never seen this, right? The new Midnight no. Express. I didn't even know these guys were a part of the at one time the Midnight Express. Well, they're not really. I mean, I don't think anybody really counts this, but it's Bob Holly in front. Yeah. Uh, you probably don't recognize him with hair. And that's Bart Gunn's old or Billy Gunn's old tag team partner, Bart Gunn. Mm -hmm. And uh yeah, he, we're trying to relaunch and recreate and reimagine the NWA here in nineteen ninety eight. 
allegedly uh, Cornette was complaining about the direction of, of wrestling. Oh, let's, let's track the reception here for the rock and rolls. <laughs> The Rock and Roll Express ever met the Midnight Express was in January of 1986. It was a great rivalry that went all through the South, the Mid-South, up in Oklahoma, down the Superdome, the Omni in Atlanta, all over the country. The Rock and Roll had a lot of success in this arena, King. Big deal. I hope you don't think they're going to be successful tonight if they're going to indeed take on the new Midnight Express. They may be classic rockers nowadays, but they still uh, have got the skills in a tag team competition to yeah, get it. To get it. Isn't this crazy to even think about, dude? What we're watching here? It's uh, it, it's bizarre. It, it's almost like Bizarro World, isn't it? It is, dude. A uh, couple of things. I you said let's hear the the response for the Rock and Roll Express. It was good. It was not great. It wasn't the old uh, Crockett. You know. Um, yeah, this is, I mean, it's 12 years after yeah, their peak. Right. right. I mean, and this is a, this is a WWE show. Sure. WWF at that time crowd. So, yeah. And I like how Robert has NWA on his tights on the back. But yeah, both uh, Ricky and Robert do. And of course, yeah. that's because they're supposed to be here as part of this NWA angle. Uh huh. And, and obviously, they both worked for uh, Jim Cornette and Smoky Mountain. And, you know, Cornette has his brand of wrestling, and this is what he thinks people wanted to see. And I guess, as the legend goes, he was arguing that. Wrestling needed more of this and less mm. of what Russo was putting out there with more of the attitude era stuff. Yeah, and right. I guess he said it long and often and proud enough that they said, okay, we'll try it. And this is what we got. And it didn't really resonate. Tony, why don't you give everybody a time code? Let them know where we are here. Okay. I've got it. Uh, let me move over here at 51, 26, 27, 28. And we see, uh, the double leg. The, right. uh, the tag team specialists, if you will, listen, they're moving good. It just looks like they're from maybe a bygone era here yeah. with uh, the styling, but, but listen, they can always wrestle. I mean, these guys are somewhere, some way. Yeah. I can't believe this is real. Ricky Morton's probably wrestling this weekend. He's still doing his thing. Wasn't uh Bart, uh, the guy that won the fight for all or whatever it was. Yeah. It was called the brawl for all the and brawl then brawl. murdered him. Right. Yeah, he got dead about a year later. Right. And of course that ended uh Dr. Best Steve Williams' career, basically. Yeah, I mean yeah. you could argue that it was kind of dead by the time he got here. Like it felt like the WWF really changed their opinion on him just after the dark match. I just recently talked to Bruce Pritchard about that. Uh huh. Uh that as soon as they signed him, he came in and worked the dark match. Well, we talked about it with JR as a matter of fact. And mm-hmm. It was against too cold and the rap or the narrative through the office was already, uh, Hey, he ain't got it. So, right. and you know, the, here's the thing I, I've observed that I want your take on, okay. You know, we heard the rock and roll express come out to the old rockers theme song. Yeah. And a few years prior to the new midnight express, we had new rockers. We had Marty Jannetty and leaf Cassidy, AKA Al snow. So we had the new version of the rockers and now we've got the new version of the midnight express. And, and I'm of the opinion that if you want to put, if you want to make sure something doesn't get over, then bring back, you know, something that was old and, 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 and repackage it with new people and call it the new so-and-so. Now I'm right. not saying the new world order. I'm not saying the word new is jinxed. I'm just saying once we've seen it, like, I don't think people cared about the new midnight express or the new rockers. No. They want the, uh, the OGs. What do you think? Is that a kiss of death? The new I, anything? Yeah. New anything. A new Coke. No, oh, hey, there you go. Well right. said. And a- another one, I, anytime someone, anytime someone comes out with on its packaging new and improved. Yeah. That means the old one sucked. That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> so I never did like the word new for anything. No. Yeah. Cornette, man. Hey, uh, uh, by the way, I wanted to, uh, give a shout out to everyone who is joining us live. And as you can tell, Eddie Prather is hogging up the conversation. Uh, Eddie, slow down on the keyboard. Let somebody else put in a comment, please. But Eddie just, Eddie said that Cornette was his hero. Eddie, come on. No one in pro wrestling should be your hero. Okay. Your hero should be somebody else like in the medical field or an inventor 
or I don't know, somebody who is, who is added something to society to benefit society. Look at Cornette taking his jacket off here. Yeah. <laughs> He's putting his jacket on inside out. <laughs> I love it. I do too. You know, what's, what's crazy too, is like what could have been, I, cause I, I'll take a look at this tag team. And I remember bar gun and Billy gun were an underrated tag team. I mean, I'm not going to say greatest of all time, but a more than passable tag team. And he has yeah. a good look and he has a reputation. We know he's a badass. Bob Holly has a reputation for being a badass and maybe even a bully. Well, that means that's a good wrestling character. Yeah. If these guys were a tag team and called anything else, except new midnight express, they might've had a chance. I had heard so much about Bob Holly being a badass. I didn't know he was also a bully. Was he like a bully like backstage? Um, well, the, you remember that show? Did you ever hear about that show tough enough? It was like a reality show around wrestling guys trying to make it or whatever, get a contract. Or have yeah, it. that's, uh, yeah. right. That's how a lot of guys got into the business, right? Well, there's a guy who, uh, who was on there trying to make a run and, and trying to make a name for himself named Matt. And I guess he did something that Bob Holly thought wasn't cool. Mm -hmm. And Bob Holly did, I guess what maybe a lot of veterans did some, some old fashioned hazing. Mm. He just got him in the ring and took some liberties and just beat the absolute shit out of him. Wow. Is that and on, is that on video somewhere? Yeah. On the television show on the television show. Yeah. Huh. Now I'm not saying like you know, he, uh, I guess there's i I've been told there's a difference between being hurt and being injured. Mm. So, you know, he was just like brutalizing him with chops until shit was bleeding and stuff, just unnecessary type stuff. Mm. Okay. Not necessarily like, oh, I'm going to break his neck. You know what I mean? Right. He didn't do yeah. that. Right. But just rough up the, the, and we saw Kevin Sullivan do that pretty routinely all the time. Know, point of time. So yeah. Bob Holly was doing it in this era and people had an opinion about it. Yeah. You know, in reality, they're not having a bad match at all. No, it, it, it is a, an old school match. Right. But old bumpy. school still works. Like the fundamentals of wrestling will work forever. But like here, you see the, the 10 punches in the corner, right? That was maybe 10 years past its time here. Yeah. There's a lot of things past its time. Watch out. Double drop kick. I'm just saying you got to remember. Oh yeah. Here we go. You got scantily clad ladies coming out guys flipping each other off, drinking beer and telling each other to suck it. And then there's the rock and roll express here. Oh, here comes Cornette. Oh, daddy. He, oh, he, he tried an elbow drop for goodness sakes. Of the earth, and now Gibson, he's got more rolled up. It should be over right here. Wait a minute, a bulldog! Yes, a bulldog headlock, and one, two, three, and that's all. Of it. Dude, a bulldog was the finish. Mm. I like it. By the way, that was good tag team strategy. Like it told a good story. I liked yeah, it. Right, but a bulldog as a finish. I don't know that you could do that in 2023. No, probably not. But you know what? I've Maybe. learned, I've learned throughout the years that in wrestling, you can do just about anything you want. Well, <laughs> amen. And, and sometimes get, sometimes get away with it. And sometimes, sometimes not. Yikes. How about Luna here? Let's listen. Evening gown matchup. The artist formerly known as gold dust. More importantly, Luna, someone tonight will get stripped of their dignity. Someone will get stripped of their pride. And to put it quite frankly, someone will get stripped of their clothing. I am here for one reason and one reason only. And that is to strip every piece of clothing from Sable's grotesque body. Sable. Sable. You are going to be left in the ring like a newborn. <laughs> Go, Luna! I'll tell you what. They're headed to ringside, and I'm going to be following them. I want to see this up close. <laughs> Different era. Talking about stripping naked absolutely women and leaving them like a newborn. But, man, is it just me, or did Luna with Sean sound just like Cobra Commander right there? <laughs> yes, she did. <laughs> I'm tired of these GI Joes. <laughs> it was, it was, it was Cobra commander. 
And if what a you presentation listen, here, man. If you listen to uh, the 80s, 80s, uh, 80s on 8 on Sirius XM, yeah. she sounds like that girl used to be a VJ who they still use on there. Oh, she sounds horrible. I can't think of her name right now. If anybody listens to her, if you, if you, the original VJs are still on. Oh God, she's brutal. How about so, these, uh, these boots she's rocking? Those are some big old platforms. You ever think about how weird that is that women have to get used to wear like wearing platforms mm -hmm. and high heels. Like, can you imagine mine and your big ass trying to walk around on platforms or high heels? Ooh. Like, man, well, we got, we got lucky there. Mm. I can't imagine trying to do that in a wrestling ring though. You know, like I've seen, uh, I remember back in the day when Brandy was a ring announcer for WWE, I guess they had these little gimmicks that the women had learned, allowed them to walk on things like this. So they would put like this little plastic tip on the end of the spike of the high heel so they could get uh -huh. their footing underneath them. And it was just crazy to think about. Let's listen to the pop for Sable. She's over buddy. <laughs> So Tony, the idea here is we got women who come in dressed head to toe and we have a winner when the other one gets naked. It's an evening gown dress kind of right. An evening gown match. Yeah. Is the situation. Uh, okay. Who, who amongst the announcers, let's say that all the announcers on AEW are going to have to have an evening gown match. Who would you book it with? I mean, I guess you count big show. You certainly count Taz Jr. We'll throw Jericho in there. He's done some commentary. You're talking about announcers Jericho. having an evening, evening gown dress. Yeah, that's right. Match? That's okay. right. Okay. Uh, mono e mono in an evening gown. Cause yeah. see, you may not know this, but, uh, Pat Patterson and Gerald Briscoe, they had an evening gown match one. Oh, okay. I'm saying if we had this with, and we, you know what, just for the sake of uh, shits and giggles, mm -hmm. we'll throw AEW producers and agents in there too. Okay. Who would be your dream evening gown match? Uh, Jerry Lynn and Arn Anderson. I was going to say Arn Anderson, but I think Taz. Okay. <laughs> Arn Anderson and Taz in an evening gown match. Mm -hmm. uh, that's got money just dripping off of it. Yeah. Every now and again, while I'm watching these matches with you, I'll take a look at my notes. Yeah. But right now I've decided I'm just going to watch this match. You're not going to take a look at your, I'm notes. not going to take a look at the notes and just see where we are and uh -huh. if I can hit you with some fun facts. I, I just. I just want to watch the artistry okay. of professional wrestling here. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Rajiv reminded us that the, uh, D the VJ is Nina Blackwood. Uh, uh, Nina has not aged well. Neither has her voice. Um, I'm telling you. Buddy, how come whenever you see somebody after 40 years and you say, man, they look old. It's been 40 years, Tony. I, I mean, you can either age well or not. Well, it, look, no one really ages well. That's what I wanted to say. Like you're yeah. over there. It, you, your, your whole being and existence is sponsored by just for men. Mm-hmm. No, just my beard. Let, let me ask you this. How much longer do you got to start dying the pubes? Oh, well, I'm not dying my pubes. Why would I why dye not? my pubes? Well, why, because why, you, why, why would why I dye your beard? What? Why dye your beard? Well, because it's part of seeing me on TV and it looks well, like shit. That, what, what am I going to come out and pull down my pants? Say, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Don Callis. Who's going to hook up with these nuts here that I just died. <laughs> Say, I would be fantastic. Oh God, dude. If you yeah, tell yeah. Don Callis to hook up with these nuts this Wednesday, you'll be yeah. trending number one on Twitter. Yeah, right. Hey, uh, he's got some heat, doesn't he? Well who's deserved. I, I almost asked who's got more heat, but I, I thought better of it. Okay. I was going to make a comparison and I realized you were going to tell me I got to edit that out. So I just okay. thought I'd leave it just like Thank it you. was. Yeah. Man, look, look, look at Sable get after it. I got to tell you, I was, uh, when this yes. came out. I was 16 years old. Yeah. I was just uh, a couple of months away from turning 17. And this was the best match of the month for me. Okay. I'm sure. And for those kids down front, I'm sure many of them would agree. I would have, I would have ruined the whole role of film in this one match. Uh huh. Oh man. Yikes. Save a loss, but I think we're the winners. Holy smokes. <laughs> Oh, 
Wow. Great slide there. If you're watching on YouTube, let me just say, I enjoyed this pay-per-view a lot more than I enjoyed spring stampede this year. You know, fuck spring stampede 98. I don't, I don't even remember spring stampede 98. That's what I'm saying. But you remember this one? That was uh, savage and sting on top for the world title. Okay. We had Hogan and Nash teaming up against Piper yeah. and the giant. I mean, it was fine Come on compared to this. Come, that was way more fun. Yeah. Give me that. Oops. Oh, look, we got to track this. Tony, I was thinking after that, uh, after this segment, we would go to our first sponsor break, which is Henson, but I think I'm going to call an audible. Yeah, buddy. I know what you're going to do. I, you know, exactly what I'm going to do. Yep. Uh, I, I, go give everybody a time code and tell us where you want us to pause. Okay. Well, let's keep on, uh, trucking here for a little bit. Uh, Luna's well, going to, I'm for it. I just, uh, I, I got a trigger finger, okay. an itchy trigger finger for this blue juice spot. Okay. Uh, and there goes, uh, uh, man, a lot of motivation. There's a lot of motivation. This was significantly better to me than the midnight express match. What year did, did something like this become taboo? Uh, I don't know, but this is 1998 and nostalgia ain't all bad. You know, <laughs> nostalgia is fun every now and again. Okay. Uh, I'm at 106.26. They're going to show the replay here. Let's stop it at 106.35 in two, three, four, stop. Ladies and gentlemen, today's episode is brought to you by Blue Chew. You probably don't need any if you're watching Unforgiven 98 along with us, but maybe a little later, it'll be time for a run in. That's the great thing about Blue Chew. Take them anytime, day or night. Plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. Remember the days when you're always ready to go? Man, we're talking about leveling up that performance, getting that extra confidence in bed. We're talking about bluechew.com. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable form and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night. So sign up at bluechew.com. Consult with one of their licensed medical providers. Once you're approved, you receive your prescription within a few days. And the best part, it's all done online. What's that mean for you? It means no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversation, no waiting in line in the pharmacy. By the way, the tablets made right here in the USA prepared and shipped directly to your door, all in a discreet package, but there won't be anything discreet about your package. Tony, tell them about our special offer. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special offer for our listeners. You can try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code WHW checkout. Just pay Five dollars shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code WHW to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring What Happened When from the Blue Chew Studios. Tony, I'm at one hour, six minutes, and thirty-five seconds, where we're looking at a little paused image of Jeffrey Jimmy Corderas pleading with uh, Sable on the inside of the ring. Marvelous Mark Merrill, the former Johnny B. Bad on the apron on the outside. I'm at one hour, six minutes, and 35 seconds, and I'm going to press play here in three, two, one, play. You're right here, so my heart started palpitating. Listen, I know people will make fun and poke fun at this. Look at the crowd. Everybody's standing. Yeah. So, you know, you, you make content, you make wrestling for the audience. That's going to consume it these days. No, we would never do this. However, the fans who were in the arena that night and who were watching on pay-per-view, they were all in mm -hmm. and maybe nobody was more in than Jerry Lawler. Let's track it. He has an edge. He's been over it in my view. 
all, with all due respect, of course, yeah, the owner of the World Wrestling Federation, Vincent K. McMahon. Maybe he's coming out here to have you apologize to him again. A little more heartfelt, a little more sincere than that last. By the way, uh, Meltzer would write of the Sable pop uh -huh. that it was such a pop that Jr. said, you'd think Ric Flair walked out. Now, to be clear, this is the era where there is a real issue with Eric Bischoff and Ric Flair and Ric Flair had been circling the building all day, thinking about whether or not to come in Wow! and appear on cam in a seat with his son. Didn't happen. Let's see what old Vinnie Mac's saying is going to occur here tonight. I mean, we haven't seen it yet. Apparently not. Now that can mean anything. After all, this is the World Wrestling Federation, and anything can happen. There's some sort of speculation, some sort of conspiracy theory going around that the reason I am here is to screw Stone Cold Steve Austin out of the WWF Championship here tonight. It's not true. Guarantee it. Well, let me tell you the real reason I'm here. The real reason I'm here is that not that many years ago at Moore County Hospital in Pinehurst, North Carolina, my mother had the pleasure of giving birth to me. That's right. I'm a native North Carolinian. That's true. As far as the native North Carolina. And it's kind of nice to be back home. These people should be proud. Well, he ain't exactly Dean Smith. But as far as this Who? conspiracy theory is concerned, am I going to screw Stone Cold out of the WWF title? The very thought that something like that would occur is beneath my dignity. And quite frankly, some respect for the most, most famous man that ever come out of North Carolina. And quite frankly, I will not dignify that with a response. However, let me say this about that. I will not be held responsible for what happens in this very ring here tonight. In no way will I accept any responsibility at all if Stone Cold screws Stone Cold. So, Tony, the idea here is, of course, we're just uh, not too far removed from the Montreal screw job. And we saw the Mr. McMahon character defend the Montreal screw job by saying Brett screwed Brett. So of course, since he is the special guest referee in the main event and he famously double crossed Brett just a handful of months prior, people are expecting the same. And he's out here to plead his case and say, yeah, that's beneath my dignity. I would never do that. Uh -huh. However, stone cold might screw stone cold. Uh, I, I love the Mr. McMahon character, and this is probably as hot as it ever was here. Right. April of 28. I love it too, but, uh, that, uh, that interview left a little bit to be desired. Yeah. Don't you think? I mean, uh, they probably needed some sort of let me up after the Sable thing, which I get. Uh, but yeah. And then we see Sable backstage. We're trying to do what we can to milk a little more revenue. Call hotline, talk to Sable. You want to hear from Sable. Actually, I don't know that I wanted to hear from her. I think I wanted to see her, but maybe that's just me. Hey, you know, uh, uh, one thing I thought during that interview is that uh, I, when was the exact year it went from WWF to WWE? And do you know? 2002, four years after this. Okay. Almost to the day. Right. Uh, so I just love Vince McMahon saying World Wrestling Federation. I did too. Yeah. How about this set? Are you big on these different? Oh, let's listen to this pop. Cut the music. Cut my music. Cut my music. I'm a star. Cut my music. You know? 
You know, it's a very special night here in the World Wrestling Federation. And so the New Age Outlaws, representing that D and rolling on that X, would like to give you all a special treat. So a personal friend of all of yours and a personal friend of mine has come out of retirement to coach myself and Mr. Ass to one more victory. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and give us a warm North Kakalaki welcome to Dean Smith. Dean Smith. So Tony, they bring out a, uh, a doll here, a blow up doll. How many of these type dolls did you own in your day? I I've, I've never even, I don't even uh, no I no, no. Have you seen one in real life? No, but anything Billy Gunn does makes me laugh. Do you think you could try to make love to an inflatable doll? I don't think so. No. Why is her, why, why is she shocked? Why does she have like a shocked, shocked face? Uh, maybe she's surprised about the, so many empty seats being in the Greensboro Coliseum. There are no empty seats, buddy. Uh, buddy, when that's uh, bullshit. No, 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 no. Those were sold. Uh, they're, they're, they're but they're not, empty. They don't might give not a shit if they're up. sold or not. Empty is fucking empty. Well, they sold okay. every seat. 21,427 broke that bullshit, weak ass okay. Starcade okay. Well, uh, guess piece what? of shit record uh, of 19,000. Uh, of those 21,000, there's about 5,000 who said, I ain't coming. The gate was 341,000, which is just a little shy of Starcade 86, but merch was 165. Uh, clearly, the WWF is hotter than ever here. And this is the, by the way, they were able to put more people in there simply because they had, they had expanded the Coliseum and look who they're taking on. This is a throwback show. I mean, is it 1986? Because we saw the midnight express. We saw the rock and roll express. And now we're seeing the road warriors. Of course, here we're calling them LOD 2000 and they're with hotter than the face of the sun, sunny. Uh, uh you know, listen, let me ask you a question. Uh, okay. This, this was a debate amongst slap dicks like myself uh -huh. uh, at the time. Were you a, if you had to categorize yourself now with the benefit of hindsight, uh, -huh. uh well, maybe not with the benefit of hindsight time and place, 1998, would you have been a sunny guy or a sable guy? Well, after seeing what I've seen so far, I would have been a sable guy because Sonny, as uh, voluptuous as she is and as beautiful and sexy as she is, Hmm. After seeing sable, mm, eh, it leaves a little something to be desired. Wow. I've never seen you be so wrong in public like this. This is just embarrassing. <laughs> uh, it is a fun uh, idea here though. We got the new age outlaws who are going to just get hotter and hotter and hotter and make more and more money. Arguably the most over tag team in WWF history at this point, just based on tickets and merch and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and that's just going to continue to evolve. I mean, it's not that point by, uh, April of 98, but we know that's where we're headed. And now this is maybe the most over tag team in history that they're going to be taking on with uh, a new look, a fresh coat of paint, new hairdos, new gear, new paint. Uh, I like the OG Hawk hairdo and face paint though. I don't prefer this version. No, me neither, because you have to do a double take to make sure it's Hawk. You do. Yeah. Yeah. The match sort of is what it is. Nobody ever thought it would be a, uh, a great match, you know, with, with, uh, the road warriors at this point. Um, let's talk a little bit about real current wrestling, if you don't mind, because this is an important week for AEW. Yeah. We, uh, we jumped right into old school stuff. I feel like we should just address the elephant in the room. You guys have a new show. Mm. Congratulations, Tony. AEW collision is going yeah. to be a thing. As I understand it, it starts in just a handful of weeks. I think June 17th is the start date. Yep. The, uh, the logo itself looks like a bit of an homage to the old nitro logo. Sure. Does. Did, you, did you think of that? Did, when you took a look at it, did you say, wow, I'm getting nitro vibes from this collision logo. I don't get nitro vibes from anything anymore. Thank God. But, uh, it did resemble the old TNT nitro, you know, colors, put it that way. The color scheme. I'll tell you, I love nitro. Maybe that's just me, but I thought it was a good show. And I hope that. You, know, you guys have a lot of success, obviously getting a show on a top five cable network that's live every week. Mm -hmm. That's great for the entire wrestling industry. And speaking of the entire wrestling industry, everybody is going to be watching dynamite tonight. It's the go home edition before double or nothing. 
Then we've got the go home rampage this Friday. That's right. Live tonight, live on Friday, but more importantly, live on Sunday, May 28th, this Sunday, double or nothing. It's a huge week for AEW. Tickets are still on sale. If you can make your way to Vegas, this is going to be a once in a lifetime event. You don't want to miss. They've got an AEW fan fest going something for everybody. Yeah. Wednesday tonight, Friday, the fan fest on Saturday. And then of course, Sunday is the big pay-per-view AEW TIX.com. Man, this is, uh, yeah. Maybe one of the more exciting times in AEW history. No, it's a great time to be a part of AEW. If you uh, factor in, uh, the, uh, show in London, uh, and can you put that uh, graphic back up for, uh, AEW? Cause I want to let, I want to let you know, there was something wrong there. You see, uh, rampage going to air on Friday, May 26th, but it will not be live at the MGM grand garden arena. My apologies. Okay. It, they, we took that down many, many weeks ago. So it's dynamite. Then we're going to tape rampage after dynamite, uh, rampage will air by the way. And this is, uh, this is, uh, one of the reasons, probably the main reason that we, we decided not to do it live because it's probably going to air like at midnight after mm, the NBA, after the NBA playoffs. I see. Uh, and, uh, and then of course, after that is the countdown show. And then, uh, Saturday, the 27th at the MGM grand is going to be the fan fest and followed by double or nothing. So that is not a live rampage at the MGM grand, although it will be originating from the MGM grand. If you've never been, you should go to an AEW fan fest, Meet some of your favorite superstars. And then of course this Sunday, man, everybody's paying attention. They want to see Wardlow versus Christian cage for the TNT championship and a ladder match. I think a lot of people are taking a look at that and wondering if that will have implications for Wembley and maybe what that might look like, uh, for the forbidden door pay-per-view. There's lots of rumor and innuendo with this new collision show. I'm not going to miss this pay-per-view. I'm jacked because sometimes you watch these shows and you can sort of call it. I can't call that one. And how about this? Speaking of not being able to call it, Orange Cassidy is going to put up his international championship. He's going to defend it against the winner of the Blackjack Battle Royal. And that's what makes it fun. You don't know who it's going to be, and it could be anybody. So that should be fun. Uh, uh, speaking of fun, go ahead. Uh, let me say that, uh, first of all, Orange Cassidy has a match tonight on, uh, dynamite against Kyle Fletcher. Oh. So let's see if he gets through that. Uh, whoever the champion is, will be defending a double or nothing. Shout out to Kyle Fletcher. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like him as I understand it. Uh, he's wrestled uh, a little bit with uh, new Japan an Australian born. I mean, he's a young kid too. This is, this is going to be a big, big show for him tonight. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's going to be fun, but maybe nothing will be more fun than anarchy in the arena. I saw so many fans who absolutely loved this segment last week. The elite is back together. It's the young bucks, Kenny Omega and hangman, Adam page. And they're going to be taking on the Blackpool combat club. John Moxley, Claudio Castagnoli, Brian Danielson, and Wheeler Yuta. You want to talk about star studded, man. It feels like everybody in that match. I mean. Obviously people know that Wheeler Yuta is the young man who's still got a lot to uh, accomplish in his career, but everybody else in there, former world champions and bona fide hall of famers. And this is going to be something else, dude. Anarchy in the arena. That's going to be chaos. Can't wait to see it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, if we'll recall the anarchy in the arena last match we had, it was freaking nuts. That's where Eddie Kingston came down with a can of gasoline and crazy and, and Brian Danielson got hurt and, uh, I hope no one gets hurt this year because you know how those guys do when the lights, when the lights are on. Jamie Hader is going to defend her AEW women's championship against Tony storm. Uh, the winner in that one will be Tony Schiavone in the makeup chair. Uh, the AEW world tag team championship is on the line with special guest referee, Mark Briscoe with FTR on the line against the greatest of all time, Jeff Jarrett and Jay lethal. Tony, is everything okay? Are you all right? Uh, Do we need to send help? Uh, that dropped something. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, just, let's all just fucking beat on the goddamn <laughs> microphone. <laughs> hey, uh, Megan, bring the goddamn dogs in and show and tell. <laughs> well, let's know. Amateur hour. Hey. I'm going to punch the mic hey. and slam the dogs into the goddamn thing. Here's Bischoff's new book, Grateful. Just <laughs> fucking beat it in the fucking mic. There we go. Hey. hey, zip it, big boy. My dog's not having a good day. Fuck oh. your dog. Oh, really? 
Yes. They ain't fuck my dog. Oh, well, they ain't oh, fuck you know, my dog. Oh, you know, it's not my fighting words, cocksucker. It's a good my thing dogs. you're in Alabama. It's a good thing you're in Alabama around, boy. I'd come and beat your ass. Wow, you, you were supposed did you ever to be talk, last night. Did you ever talk about my dog again? Fuck your dog. No, you I, said you were going to be here fuck last my time. dog. It's fuck your dog. I'll fuck your dog in front of you. Oh. Probably not. <laughs> um, What's wrong with Bug? He's got a bad leg, and he keeps jumping down off of this. And I told him, I said, you can't jump down because you'll hurt your leg. And he what, What's wrong with down. his leg? Why is his leg hurting? Well, he's got, first of all, he's got a deformed leg right here. And it's just... uh. Is it okay, buddy? Is that leg okay? Yeah, let's see. Uh, just a, it's the deformed leg. It's always been deformed and just uh, bothering him. That's all. And then a crazy dog will probably end up coming up here in, in a few moments. You gonna get him in like a little walking boot? Oh, uh, he might. Might have to get. We, he's he's Dude. worn a he's worn a boot before. A little walking boot. He's my boy. And don't you ever talk about him again. Well, you know, you were supposed to be here last night. Yeah, he was hurt. I couldn't come there last night. Wait, you you didn't come because my dog watch was Dal- hurt. Watch Dalton Castle, right? And action, Mike dog. Jackson, and Sin Bodie, uh, and unbelievably, uh-huh. the debut of Big Booty Judy. How was that? Her un her. Well, if you fucking wanted to know, you'd have been here. Yeah. No. Well, I I'm I thought somebody would tell me, but I guess I'll ask Cassio tomorrow night. On uh, he's he's blocked you. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what else is new? Uh, we, I mean, he, you've blocked half of the internet on Twitter. Well, yes, you I have. have heat with somebody for blocking you. Yep. Nope. Cause I, I've blocked thousands. I, I was I just, blocked. You blocked me once. I just, I just enjoy it. It's fun. You like it. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't go leave my dog to go see a wrestling match. Okay. So are you going to do commentary from the house on Wednesday night? No, no, I'll, I'll leave him for that. But, and I'd take him with me if it wasn't for. Wasn't for all the pyro and everything that would make him shit himself. So, so wait, the, he's got a deformed leg and pyro makes him shit himself. Oh yeah, man, he's good for nothing, isn't he? Yeah. What's he do? Just scroll Facebook all day. Hey, he's a dog. Okay, he's a dog. And quit talking about my dog. Okay, there, I'm not. You brought yeah, your dog up. You slammed the him one. in. The, there's the that, other that's one. a nothing happening, son of a bitch, right <laughs> well, there, Kirby. Well, she's uh, she's trouble. There's no question. Now she's taking his spot. Well, that's not exactly his spot, but it's close. Yeah. So, so is this what Bug does just all day, just sit in your lap, hang out? He just I carry him from room to room. He watches TV with me. When I'm here working, uh, here I, I'll put him over there and I'll type. He goes with me everywhere. Do, do you uh, just put your hand uh, like underneath his butt and he just poops in your hand like a ice cream no. machine? No, I take no, I take, I, take, I take him outside. He can poop outside. Okay. How does he let you know that he has to poop? Uh, he just, lo- he'll, he'll look at me, uh, keep staring at me because what he likes to do normally is when we say, isn't this a wrestling show, buddy, you're the one who's putting your dog on camera and slamming okay. his fucking head into the okay. turnbuckle <laughs> 10 times. No, <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, that's right. He bores me too, bug. Keep yawning. Um, you're yawning at road warrior animal. Oh, well, there you go. Well, he can't do anything to he's dead. Okay. Wow. That was hurtful. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to make sure that he knew. Let's get a tight shot of that fucking dog. Hey, bud. This is the reason your audio sucks this week on your podcast. No. You boys and girls. No, my audio is good. My audio is good. No, it's not when you slam his fucking head into the mic. I know. I dropped a freaking headset. I've got, I've got, Hey buddy, I've got two headsets here. I've got one. I use for podcasting two microphones. I got one. I use to do uh, audio repairs. So I dropped that one. That's what I did. I can pick it up right now. If you'd like, no, no, we're good. It's made enough noise. Or am I just, I feel like I'm in a low key staring contest with that fucking dog. Yeah. He's, he's, he's giving, he's, oh, he blinked. I won. I won. No, no, he's eyeballing you, buddy. He blinked. I won. Uh, Hey, how's Lois doing? Uh, she's in a lot of pain. July, July 3rd, she gets, uh, her first knee replacement surgery. Oh dude. That's big news. That is uh huh. July 3rd. Okay. That's good. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Well, I'm glad. I mean, I hope hope it helps out. So, um, 
do you have any good news at your house at all? So far, it's my dog's fucked up. My wife's hurting. Hmm. No, no good news. Not no good news. No new news. Okay. No. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think. Uh, we had a water leak. Got that fixed. That's good news. So you had a water leak. That's the good news. Well, the good news, we got it fixed. The bad news was, uh, we got it reached out. Cobb County water reached out and says, Hey, you got a water leak. And I went, really? I said, yeah, here's a bill for $1,100 of water. Oh, well, you, you, uh, you can get them to take that off. They did. Cause I yeah. fixed it and, uh, and they substantially, well, how about that? How about that suplex by freaking Hawk? And look, looks like crap. How about that, man? Let's see. Look, they're overturning it. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh no, really? The winners of this round and still World Wrestling Federation Tag Team Champions, the New Age Outlaws. See, the ref was only looking at one set of shoulders, not the other set of shoulders. Two sets of shoulders were down. I can't believe you're a Sable guy, not a Sonny guy. Sonny was the correct answer, Tony. Well, Sonny is pretty sexy, but I think right there, the comparison is you got to go with Sable. You're just saying that because of gimmicks. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) For God's sakes, yes. Oh, yes. Tony, why do you keep fucking with that head? You're fucking with the audio. There's a mic on it, you some bitch. Can you not just hit a button on the board? No longer. How's that sound? A lot better. Look at this. Look at this doomsday device on the fucking ref. He's a Tony, I think it's time that we uh, take another break here. Why don't you tell us when we need to pause? I'll let you call the time. All right. I'll call the time. Uh, we'll get it to uh, 130 even. Three, two, one. There it is. One hour, 30 minutes even. We're taking a break here to remind you that today's show is brought to you by Henson Shaving. I absolutely love Henson Shaving, and I love that they're a family owned business. But what I find interesting about Henson Shaving is that wasn't the original plan. You see, these cats are aerospace parts manufacturers who've made parts for the International Space Station and the Mars Rover. And now they're bringing that precision engineering to your doggone face. Here's what they're doing. They're using aerospace grade CNC machines to make metal razors that extend just 0.0013 inches. That's less than the thickness of a human hair, y'all. And it means a more secure and stable blade that gives you a vibration-free shave. And the razor also has built-in channels to evacuate hair and cream, which make clogging virtually impossible. As a business, what was cool to me is Henson Shaving wanted to make the best razor, not the best razor business. What I mean is there's no plastic here. This is a razor that will last you a lifetime. And there's no subscription gimmicks. There's no proprietary blades where, you know, this is our design this year. We'll have a new one next year. So there's no planned obsolescence either. You see, Henson razors work with a standard dual edge blade like your grandfather or every professional wrestler is very familiar with. But this has the benefits of new school tech. You see, Pop Pop never had a razor that was .0013 inches thick. I think you're going to love it. Normally, when something is better, it costs more. This is one of those rare opportunities where not only is the Henson shave better than you could get anywhere else, it's also cheaper. You see, once you own a Henson razor, it's only like 3 to $5 to replace the blades. Not 3 to $5 a week. Not three to five dollars a month, not three to five dollars a quarter, three to five dollars a dog on year. And Tony, I think you've got a special offer right now. Tony, if you're still there, I think you've got a special yes. offer. You have to yes. unmute yourself to talk every day. Okay, now and again. are you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready if you are. Yes, Conrad and everybody out there. It's time to say no to subscriptions and thank God for that. And yes to a razor that'll last you a lifetime. Visit HensonShaving.com slash WHW 
to pick the razor for you and use code WHW and you'll get two years worth of blades free with your razor. Just make sure to add them to your cart. Two years worth of blades. That's 100 free blades when you head to H-E-N-S-O-N-S-H-A-V-I-N-G dot com slash WHW and use code WHW. Check out, don't forget, add those razor blades to your cart. Use the code and you'll get them free. How about it? Let's get back to the show here, Tony. We're at one hour and 30 minutes and uh, I'll count us back in here right. in three, two, one play. <laughs> So Tony, what we've got coming up next is, uh, Jeff Jarrett coming out to sing a song with the country music group, Sawyer Brown. Oh God. And what I really want to understand is why, when I brought up earlier on this very program uh-huh. that the AEW world tag team titles would be on the line uh-huh. when FTR uh-huh. are going to defend their tag titles with a special guest referee and Mark Briscoe uh-huh. against the challengers. The greatest professional wrestler of all time, Double J, Jeff Jarrett, uh-huh. and Jay Lethal. Uh-huh. How in the world? How dare you hmm. distract the conversation from us talking about Jeff Jarrett winning gold uh-huh. on pay per view in 2023? Yeah. And you just ran a distraction gimmick. That's probably because called, of my dog, right? Yes. You were like, Oh, let me make a fake yeah. hubaloo here. I want to okay. take away from Jeff. I want to okay. stick it to him. I want to bury him. Maybe because that dog, hi bug just looked at me. Maybe because that dog is more damn important to me and Jeff Jarrett. You ever thought about that? No, well, you never did. That's not, that's not true. Nothing. You weren't a dog person until you got married. That's not true. Yes, I was a dog is. person until my no, mom ran him all over. No, you weren't shut up. Oh, somebody died. They just fucking gave a doomsday device to a goddamn referee. Oh, okay, got it. Well, the, from that angle, it looked like he had his head covered up. I don't know <laughs> if you can go back and show the slide of that. <laughs> Jeez. That, that angle looked like the head was covered up. I thought, he's dead. So when are you going to admit that? I'm not going to admit It's not a conspiracy theory. You, the, the brass, the executives at AW, I've been trying to hold Jeff Jarrett down. Really? Yeah. For, it starts with Aubrey Edwards, shoddy officiating. Everybody knows he's won that bell and he, he technically, and, and, and I hope you'll acknowledge this, oh, well, look in the camera and tell the truth. He's the uncrowned international champion. Like, no, he's not even close. So yes, there. he is. No. Yes. He's, and he's a terrible singer as we're about to find out. No, he's actually really, really good. I mean, look at Tennessee. Look at Tennessee Lee. Come on. In conjunction with Tennessee Lee Promotions, I'm very proud this evening to introduce to you the country band of the 90s. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Sawyer Brown. Sawyer Brown. I'll be singing back up this evening to none other than the most versatile performer in all of the world today. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's J-E-double-F, J-A-double-F, D-double-C. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you double J. It's Jeff Jeff. Wow. We think uh, Double J's daddy's doing right now. I think he's pitching his big old chair, smiling. My boy, my boy's gonna sing. You be proud of him too. Well, I've always been proud of Jeff Jarrett's ability in the ring, but oh, yeah. now you're fixing to really be proud. Well, maybe I thought so. you were singing something other than country music. Hmm. Her teeth were stained, but. Her heart was pure. That's another country song. <laughs> Double J, are you ready? What's he going to sing? Let's kick it, boys. By the way, they're chanting, we want flair in the background. Really? Yeah. You turn up her nose. 
knows that she won't buy my Cadillac. From the corner of my eye, I saw you when you left. So that's voice tracks, but that's really his voice. Uh huh. Good. Good for him. So, uh, are you going to bust Jeff Jarrett's balls about this when you see him at oh, TV? Oh, oh yeah. Are you? Yeah, that's my favorite thing to do at AEW. It's not announce. It's to bust people's balls in the back. Well, we know your favorite things not uh, to do is not announcing. We've heard the show, so we know it's not your favorite. Hey, my voice brings you back to the '90s, motherfucker. How does that sound? I'm not arguing, you cock. Right, so, so shut up. Was- so shut the fuck up. This was my idea. Okay. <laughs> Getting you to talk about wrestling again was my idea. Fuck you. I was your no, first and only it fan. Fuck, it ain't fuck me. It's fuck you. Right, dogs? Long before there was an OnlyFans where you were on there spreading your butt cheeks with both hands, I was your only fan. What? So I don't want to fucking hear that. Okay. Bug. Curb. Actually, that's a new shirt now over at LoisRules.com. I was Tony Schiavone's only fan. <laughs> 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 Ooh, that'd be a good one. Boy, could that be more fucking obvious or what? Wow. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm so out of sorts here today that I didn't even turn on my lights. So yeah. I mean, it. listen, if you want, why don't you run your goddamn dog into the microphone a few more okay. times? Too. Okay. <laughs> Hang on here. Here comes the other way. You know, usually when Silva is with us, you berate him for about 10 minutes before we go live and tell him what a piece of shit he is and how yeah, terrible he is at his job. Yeah. How about that? And there's no professionalism and everything's yeah. haphazard. Yeah. And today you're throwing your microphone into your hand, like a fucking, what are those little musical instruments do? Yeah. Or yeah, you got one of those gimmicks and yeah. you're fucking putting your dog on camera, show and tell you forget to turn your lights on. Yeah. Well, you know, why don't we, uh, next uh, time, why don't you just zoom in from bed? So, you know, <laughs> just <laughs> don't even sit upright. Just lay down. That, that's a hell of an idea. <laughs> next week. I got, we I got one of those sticks. I can just let's do it better than that. Just set a tripod up in the corner. Yeah, just you used to have one over there in the eighties. Just, just have Lois come in and say, "You gonna get your ass up today or not?" Hey, let me ask you. What? I've seen Shivani home movies from back in the day. You were an early doctor, uh, adopter to uh, recording home movies with the family and all that. Be honest, you made a fun tape once. No, no, come on. No, 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 no. That's a lie. You're lying that, on the that. Program. Is not a lie. That is not. Lois would never go for anything like that. I didn't say it was with Lois. <laughs> no, that was the horseman era. Uh, honey, I've got to take the Crockett needs the camera on the road this week. I, uh, I'll bring it back after this, no. this leg. <clears throat> That's oh, is this Steve Blackman? Yeah. Steve Blackman's here to make sure that whatever chance Jeff Jarrett had of getting over never comes to fruition. Weird little stretching maneuver here. Yeah. Oh, good God. Did you yes. hear that? Yes. Tennessee Lee just assaulted the lethal weapon with a guitar. Didn't get the best shot of that, but still, we got a little pull apart here. Uh, call it now. By God. Is Jeff Jarrett walking out 10 pounds heavier on Sunday night? Um, I say he is. I think he's going to get 10 pounds heavier. Oh, I see what you're saying. I hope the hell he doesn't. Did you think I meant he's going to fuck up a buffet in Vegas? <laughs> I didn't know what you meant. He's going to take a big shit. What are you talking <laughs> yeah. about? Okay. I got the cliche now. I, uh, I hope, I hope the hell he does. And I don't want to hear. That's all I need to hear is more Sanjay Dutt on TV. Well, maybe you'll be hearing more Karen. We just saw Karen on TV. Yeah. How about that? How about that? Those Crazy. are some kayfabe and motherfuckers too. Didn't tell nobody nothing. Yeah. Uh, finally in the world title picture, jungle boy, Darby Allen, Sammy Guevara, MJF. What do you think? Darby Allen. Really? Yeah. How about that for a prediction? Mm-hmm. Man, that'd be a big moment right there. Yeah, it would be a big moment. That's exciting. Four pillars, four way. It all happens this weekend. It's live on pay-per-view. 
double or nothing. It's on Sunday. It's a crazy wrestling weekend too, Tony, because before we get there, as a matter of fact, the day before is the big Saudi Arabian show where, you know, they just created like a, a new fake big gold belt. And as I understand it, it's Seth Rollins and AJ styles. Meanwhile, we got, uh, I believe Brock Lesnar and Cody Rhodes again. So a little Saturday afternoon wrestling from Saudi Arabia. And then Sunday mm-hmm. night, AEW double or nothing. It's going to be a lot of wrestling this week, man. It's a big week. It is a big week, man. I've heard the stories about going to Saudi Arabia. Uh, I know it's, uh, it's, it can be tough on the guys and girls, but it's great for the promotion. So there you go. Yeah. That travel schedule is no joke, but mm, man, it's tough. Neither's that, neither's that giant check. <laughs> That's right. No joke. By the way, the night after this show is where the DX invasion happened. So I'm curious from your perspective, what do you remember about the DX invasion? I, uh, we were in Norfolk and the only thing I remember about it was someone said, uh, there's some WWE guys or WWF guys outside here and they're, they're shooting something. And I went, are you kidding me? Are you serious? They are actually acknowledging us. They are, they're actually sending some people out. Um, now I'd also heard that they had gone to our offices. Yeah. Now that happened, uh, the next week. Yeah. And that just, that that all that kind of blew me away that that was out of the norm that Vince had normally done in that he ignored the competition. Right. So it made me think that, well, maybe we are doing something right here. If they are outside. And I remember thinking, I wonder if they're going to try to get inside. I wonder if we're going to let them inside and, I guess Eric thought said now recently that had he known he would have let him in. Right. Yeah. And it's interesting to think like what could have happened there? Like I even asked Bruce that recently on something to wrestle. Like if they would have let you in, would that have wound up being bad for you? Because then your guys would have been on their television show. Would everybody have changed the channel? Mm -hmm. And Bruce was honest. And he said, I don't know, but I was hoping they would. I don't know what the long-term effect would have been, but. It would have been fun, would have been new, would have been interesting. And there's this narrative out there that everybody would have fought. And Bruce was quick to poke holes in that and say, yeah. no, these guys are friends. They wouldn't exactly. Have fought. No, they're all friends. Yeah. Yeah. That, that well, have maybe not all. Most. Well, but they're all familiar with each other. Yes. Yes. Right. And, and many of them are friends and many of them have wrestled against each other. And so, yeah, Bruce is right about that. That wouldn't have happened. So what we're setting up here, this is a long video package explaining how we got to the first ever Inferno match here in the WWF. Mm. We're going to see a motherfucker get set on fire here, Tony. Well, we've seen a half naked woman. So why not a person on fire? Yep. In this era, you know, that's what we did. We surrounded the ring with fire. We would summon lightning. Um, the only thing that would be more dangerous than surrounding the ring with fire would be if there was a giant vat of mimosas because somebody could fucking drown in those mimosas. If they were overserved, buddy, don't even get me started. Yeah. You always go back to that. You've... What? How many times are you going to knock the mimosa match between orange Cassidy and Chris Jericho on this, on this broadcast on this one today, or just no, a series, of just, WHW? just a series of WHW. This is about two the 10th. Yeah, that's about the 10th time you've done it. So we got, we got 200 more to go. That's fine. Yeah. Well, if you want, I mean, I don't have to mock that. I could, I could talk about other silly moments in wrestling. Like, oh boy, could you ever, there's plenty of silly moments to go around. I just thought since you started selling for me on the mimosa talk, I'd just keep that up. I like when you sell for me, <laughs> look at, uh, this is Tony, uh, Tony, this is Bruce Richard's favorite WWF story of all time. The, uh, the brothers backstory. Okay. Look at this guy, man. We, we had motherfuckers on that's a stunt man running around. He got caught on fire because undertaker lit him up with lightning. Wow. Oh. You telling me you've never seen somebody just pointed at another dude and him just catch on fire spontaneously. Not yet, but my life's oh. not over yet. So oh. it could happen. Orange Cassidy needs to get his shit together. Here, here's the, you keep talking about my dog. You'll get struck by lightning. No, I won't. That would require oh, you. Oh, yeah, you will. Over oh, yeah, here. You will. Oh, yeah, you will. 
the only time you'll come here is when there's a house show. And the real question is, are you even coming to the Huntsville house show? Uh, probably not. That's what I thought. Yeah. It is next weekend. I knew better than to count on seeing your ass here. No, don't count on me. No, I won't. I know better than to count on you. Cause I, I'm, I think I've got to get a pedicure that day. Yeah. Well, I know, I know one day you're getting your, your butthole waxed. Uh-huh. We have that shared Google calendar uh-huh. and Lori put it in there. Dad's anus bleaching. Uh-huh. So I know that that's the day before. Okay. What's the difference between wax and bleaching? Well, like, wax is know. where they pull the hair off. Yeah. Well, you said wax bleaching. first and then well, cause I, as I understand it, uh-huh. you don't want to just bleach your butthole hair. Uh-huh. You got to get it ripped out and then you get it bleached out. I've never done it, but man, that sounds like a, a process. Look at the lighters ringside. Yeah. The kids How does that like kid have a lighter? <laughs> no, <laughs> that kid shouldn't even have a lighter. Smoking a doobie with his friends. That's illegal. Tony. Well, has that ever stopped anybody from wanting to do it? No. Can you imagine? Let's, let's just talk about Glenn Jacobs here for a minute. I realize he's okay. a polarizing figure in this era, but I just want to remind everybody. My man was, was working in Smoky mountain in Puerto Rico, looking for a break. They bring him up, give him a look because he had a good match with the undertaker in Smoky mountain. And they're like, all right, he's a big dude. Let's just try something. They give him an evil dentist gimmick that obviously goes nowhere with a name like Isaac Yankum. Yeah. And then they say, okay, we'll try something new. Diesel's gone, but we own the character. We'll make you fake Diesel. Just study Kevin Nash's move set and rip it off. Mm. And he does that. And then they say, "All right, what if Paul Bear fucked Undertaker's mom and made a son, and that son grew up to be a pyromaniac, and he burned down the family home and killed everybody inside of it, and Undertaker thinks his brother's dead because he killed him, but instead he didn't." And along the way, he had a high school girlfriend and he killed her. Then he had sex with her when she was dead, fucked her brains out. Katie Vick. And then by the way, we're going to put you in a match. We're going to surround the ring by fire. And if it's all right with you, we'd like to set you on fire. Now, I know you went to wrestling school and you learned to do flat backs and tuck your chin, uh-huh. but where are you with fire stunts? <laughs> and as if that's not enough, Tony, this is real. This is April of 98, two months after this in June of 98, they put him in a first blood match with stone cold, Steve Austin. Now, let me ask you this. Have you ever seen Kane's face at this point? Because nobody else has, he's wearing a fucking mask right. and the mask is red, right? How was he in a first blood? Like, mm. and I, so I glossed over the fact that they once in Memphis or, or, or Cornette rather had him dress up like a goddamn Christmas tree. He was called <laughs> the Christmas creature. Are you serious? Yeah. So he was an evil dentist, a fake diesel, a Christmas tree. And then you just heard the undertaker backstory. Now we're going to set him on fire and put him in first blood matches and have him fuck corpses. And wow. I, I just don't think if I'm Glenn Jacobs, I'm like, you know, when they're like, all right, we'd like to set you on fire. I might have to be like, you know, what's the release process look like? Like, can we just talk about if I asked for, I'm not saying I'm asking for it, but if I did ask for it, like what would be the next steps? Cause I would think at this point I could go just choke slam a bunch of dudes in ECW or I could go to Japan. I mean, they probably wouldn't let me go to WCW, but I'd rather do one of the other two than be set on fucking fire. Yeah. Yeah. He's, uh, he's done some things in this business now, hasn't he? And well, let me ask you this. You said he was a polarizing figure. During well, this era, what no, was he is now, about? He is now because, well, because he's, he's a Republican, right? Well, yeah. You're a politician. Half the people are going to hate you. That's just the nature of the beast. Right. I don't know his politics. Don't care to know his politics. Just know that the dude, uh, had one hell of a WWE run, but man, he had some, that was some crazy stuff here that he did. And, and this is really like, 
you know, he just debuted in October the prior year and immediately he's interfering in the main event, which is the first ever hell in a cell with Shawn Michaels and the undertaker. And he's going to get to wrestle the undertaker at WrestleMania. So part of him has to be like, fuck, I finally made it. I'm not this stupid dentist. I'm not dressed up like a Christmas tree, but now it's like, well, we want to let's track it here. Can you believe this, Tony? Look at this. It's been about 10 minutes to build up this match. Hasn't it with the, the entrances and the the package, the anticipation than the, than the actual execution, like, you know, it can't be easy to breathe in there. First of all, it's hot. We know that. But it's also got to be sucking up a lot of the oxygen. Yeah. Right. And it's a crazy visual. But I mean, think about how close that is to fans. And we just have an open fire here. And little known fact, Gerald Briscoe is the one controlling the amount of propane going through this system. Wow. And as I understand it, the plan was they sent us a, a car to uh to come get these guys. Yeah. Uh talking about Kane and Paul Bear, so they could get to the building early enough to sort of walk through this and see it the day before in practice. Yeah. The limo driver went to the wrong state wherever they were meeting. There were two, two towns with the same name. So he went the wrong direction. So the first time he sees all of this is the day of the show. Now for the undertaker. Yes, it's still dangerous. I'm not arguing that at all. I'm not saying there's extra precaution that needs to be made. None of that, but I'm just saying. One of these cats is going to get set on fire and he didn't even get a walk through the day before. It's just, Hey, yeah, this is where we're going to light you up over here. Mm, wow. What could have been Greensboro, Georgia. There is a Greensboro, Georgia. I don't know. I just know the limo driver went the wrong way and they were like, wait, so we're not, we're not doing a walkthrough with this. No, but it'll be fine. Well, what's the finish? We're going to light you up. Okay. See you tomorrow. So someone is actually going to be lit up in this thing. Yeah. The loser is the person who catches on fire, Tony. That's nice. It's sort of like when, you know, you guys had that high stakes match where a guy fell in some champagne and orange juice. <laughs> Ding. 199. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, by the way, I love when people would like ra- a few years ago, you guys had a cage match and I guess Chris Jericho took a bump off and people were critical saying, well, they were safety precautions. Yeah. Did you want him to fall on concrete? <laughs> you dumbass. It's supposed to be a show. I don't know if you know this, but Arnold Schwarzenegger doesn't. What are you talking like? This is it's entertainment. Yeah. But you can't work fire, Tony. Now, granted, he's going to put a sleeve on here in a minute, but still there's a dangerous component here. My goodness. Yeah. I mean, like you notice how they're working the corners and not the ropes. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's, there's, there's really not much fire around the corners and the ropes can bend back and you get burned. Now, right now against ropes you know that the undertaker's boots are heating up. Oh dude, he's hot right now. And and listen, I'm sure they've both got, if you take a look, the undertaker and Kane have both wet their hair down. You try, you got to try to do what you can a to keep your body cool. Cause you know, what's hotter than a son of a bitch in there. Right. But B you probably just want to make sure, Hey, if this hair's flying around, it's wet, it'll be less likely to just catch on fire and spread right fast. Cause I mean, that's worth mentioning too. Like, I don't know for sure if he's wearing different gear, but can you imagine how flammable Kane's gear is? Mm. Like you got to imagine that he's got separate gear on here. Cause that, that, that fabric, that lycra or whatever the fuck it is, it's gotta be crazy. Yeah. You said that, uh, Gerald Briscoe controlled the, uh, Bruce told me that recently. Yeah. Okay. I, it's pretty cool that the, the flames would go up when someone would take a bump. Yes. So he he's out there doing that on command. Yeah. Uh, Meltzer would say, while this wasn't the first ring surrounded by fire match, it had done been done previously in both Puerto Rico and later Japan. It differed from the previous ones. And they put cloth on the ropes and used gasoline to start the flames, making those matches considerably more dangerous, but this was held indoors and a special effects were in place in those matches that were primitive in comparison. Again, with the exception of one spectacular dive out of the ring by Undertaker, there wasn't much of a wrestling match to this, but it was an interesting spectacle to watch two guys not doing much of anything in a ring surrounded by flames. The fans reacted more to the flames going up and down than the moves in the match. Right. Well, yeah, at this point, it's less about the characters. It's more about the setting. Yeah, about the spectacle of it. 
And, and you can see that, yeah, they're just kind of just punching and kicking and right there and stomping their way through this. Okay. I see the cameramen are talking to each other like, oh, uh, uh, did you see that? That what one camera is looking to his left like, fuck it, I ain't getting close to it. No. <laughs> Imagine if there was a wrestler's union, they'd have been like, y'all want to do what now? <laughs> no. Can't set them on fire. That's, that's not allowed. There's a chair shot to the head, which like my, a, my comparison hit me in the head with a chair. I'm not going in the fire. <laughs> yeah. By comparison, you're right, but you don't see many head shots with a chair anymore. No, thank God. No wrestling's a lot safer. Now there's no chair shots to the head. And they don't surround the ring with fire anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's a lot safer. They do some crazy shit now. Good God. Well, it's not safer for Darby Allen. No, it's not. And, and let's, be, let's be real. If this was Darby Allen, he would have skateboarded uh, along the fucking flame gimmick. Of course he would have. Like he don't give a shit. Oh, it, it, it's amazing that he just doesn't give a shit. Just, I, I guess, I guess that's the skateboarders mentality, right? Daredevil, uh, type stuntman type mentality. I don't know. I guess you just assume at some point it gets to, it's like, Hey man, uh, the pain's just going to be part of the deal. If you're going to yeah. be a skateboarder. So right, got to embrace that. I know I've told this story before, but the first time I met Darby was MLW and he would do crazy ass things like. Uh, go up to the top and, and come off on the uh, go up to the top of the uh, the balcony. Come off on the ring in a in a he did it in a coffin drop with a chair strapped to his back onto the ring. And I remember telling Darby after I said, uh, "Son, you're gonna you're gonna really get hurt one day. You 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 might want to rethink some of these stunts that you're doing." And like the very next week, he came to me. He said, "I can't work tonight because I got a concussion." I said, "Wow, well, there you go." But he's amped it up since then. <laughs> Just uh, so that's, you know what? That's Darby. Right? That's all you can say. It's Darby. And needless to say, the kid's gotten over, hasn't he? Uh, yeah, you think? Yeah. It's funny, too, because the first time he was on AEW, um, man, I forget what the show was, but he was in a singles match, I think, with Cody. Maybe it was fight for the fallen or fighter yeah. fest or whatever. One of those early AEW shows was, right. and I was watching with uh, Megan and Megan goes, oh, so he's like uh, AEW's sting. And I was like, what? And she goes, yeah. Like, you know, when sting debuted, he was for the kids. He had, you know, the, the bright colored hair and the bright colored face paint and the neon tights. And he was the surfer guy. Well, that's kind of not a thing anymore. Now it's skateboarding and. It's not bright colors. It's black, but he's still wearing paint and he's doing the surfer thing. And he goes, she goes, he's, he's their sting. And I was yeah. like, well, I don't know. I don't see that. And then of course, when sting debuts, he's with Darby and I'm like, well, fuck Megan knew the whole time. <laughs> she knew she sure did. Hmm. Wow. This big is a, a spectacle to say the least. No big poof, big poof of flame when he, Hit him with that elbow drop or the leg drop or whatever it was. There's another big, big poof. Big poof of flame. Big here comes another big poof. Watch. Poof. Hey, poof. so uh poof. Are you gonna poof. now that you've seen this, are you gonna advocate to Tony? You're gonna no. tell QT? No. You're gonna let Pat Buck know win in no. an inferno match? No. I think it could work if y'all did an outdoor venue. It probably could work. Uh Knowing that there's one bin in Japan is probably something Kenny Omega would think about doing. Oh, that one was a disaster. You don't want to do that. Yeah. I don't want to do that one. Oh, that one, that, that one in uh, Japan was real bad, real bad, real bad. Somebody get what burned. They did, Tony is they wrapped the ropes in cloth okay. that have been soaked in gasoline and it sucks all the oxygen up and created so much smoke. The guys had to just like belly crawl and they were like trying to see who could get out of there first. Cause it was that dangerous. Wow. Sabu was in it. Sheik was in it. I think Tarzan Goto was in it. Oh my God. Yeah. And don't forget now, the reason we're doing this, this whole Inferno match is because the undertaker thought that his whole family died in a fire. Right. 
And so now he's fighting his brother. Well, half brother, they share a mother that Paul bearer has referred to as a two bit whore mm. on WWE television. Yikes. Uh, because he used to bang undertaker's mom mm. and he let one soak and that pain <laughs> is here. I'm sorry. Use that vernacular again. He let one he, soak. Uh, Kane, Kane's dad, Paul uh-huh. Bear, let it soak in Undertaker's mom. Let it soak. Okay. Let it soak. Gotcha. It's like let it snow, kind of. But it's let it soak. Let it soak. Right. I think let it snow and we wouldn't have a cane. Man, Undertaker went almost too far. Did you see that? Yeah, and he's kind of rolling back the other way a little bit. Did you ever hear about the time Undertaker did his entrance in his jacket and, and, and he mistimed his walk and the flame came up and set him in his jacket on fire on the stage. Is it, uh, on the network somewhere? No, they but you, it you can throw it in your Google machine. Mm-hmm. Look at this. I would not want to be climbing these ropes with those. No. Flames on me. I want to climb it quickly. Glenn, Mr. Jacobs. Oh, no, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that spot. No, let me get my feet up. I don't want anything to do with this. God, am I, that's got to be just, it's got to be like. Wrestling on top of a grill. Yeah, there you go. I mean, like I, I'm going to stick to mortgages. I love, look at the smoke over there. Yeah, I see it. Fire. That's smoke from the smoldering boots. Is what that, there you go. Get up there. I'll just. What a visual poof. poof. That's a pretty cool visual too. Dude. It is a crazy visual. Uh huh. And here's what's even crazier. They didn't just do this one time. They did another one of these. Oh, so like uh, what? I don't want to do the first one. I damn sure ain't doing the second one. Mm. I'm tempting fate now. Oh, over the top. Now that's, uh, Probably the safest place to be there. Say there's Briscoe. Uh huh. Paul Bear doing? How's he gonna get back in? I have no idea. King is down the outside, and and wait. You ready? Headed, it looks like Kane's headed to the house. Kane has headed back to the locker room. The Undertaker still Look at that. Look at this. Every time the Undertaker moves to the ropes. Oh God, Leon! They're going to wrestle each other a month after this. Vader versus Kane in a mask versus mask match. Mm-hmm. And this is the era where Jr. would talk about how fat and out of shape uh, Vader is on commentary. Wow! All right, here we go. Let's watch. Can you imagine the first time you saw that? Mm. Like, I know you weren't watching back then, but I have it on good authority that when that happened, mm-hmm. a 17 year old Excalibur stood up from his dad's recliner and yelled, Toe face suicida. <laughs> uh, I think Undertaker called it, or Bruce called it the flying cow. The flying cow? Yeah. Yeah, that's not a good idea, Paul Bear. No. You can't call a man's mom a two bit whore, try to set him on fire. Mm-hmm. And hit him with a chair. Boom. Uh, wow. nice. Could we hit you? Would you rather be hit in the back with a chair or on the top of the head? In the back. Okay. The dick or in the top of the head? The dick. The balls. Or the back, the back. (laughs) What? Just trying to figure out, you know, the balls. Well, I know that you've had neck issues before. I've had them. Yeah. Yeah. I still got them really. But like in my head, Mm -hmm. you've talked about how you have minuscule genitalia. And then I would think you would just want to take the shots there. Cause I don't hurt anything. Well, they'd be minuscule, but in pain, they would probably like still swell. badly. Yes. Yeah, swell. Yeah. Mm. 
Oh, look, they're on the Jeff Jarrett. He's going to hit him with a freaking drum set. Look at the Pepsi logo behind him, the sign. You can see in the reflection, the flames are still dancing around the ring Mm. because we're not done. See, they're getting, this was all a distraction. What we just saw with undertaker and Paul bear was all done to get attention on them and away from the ring. And that allows Kane to set up his big stunt here. By the way, Paul bear should have came out of that drum bleeding. Yeah. Well, there you go. There you go. I'm just saying like, it wasn't coming down nearly as fast as you would have wanted it. No. Yeah. Boy, he was such a good guy in real life. He's selling it. Such a great guy in real life. Well, here we go. We're going to see uh, something that should probably have a police report affiliated with it. Here we go. Chair, Undertaker catches up on his hand. Okay, back in the fire. Kane's on fire. Kane is on fire. Kane is on fire. He's burning. Put him out. Put him out. He's burning an Undertaker. Hell. He's on fire and he's in hell. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> With Jerry screaming, put him out. Put him out. And put on that out. note, Tony, I think we need to take a break. I'll let you oh. call the time. Okay. He's walking back in the ring as I've got it right now. We'll uh, take a break at uh, 20630, which comes up in 10 seconds. What's in that? five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Pause. All right. So we're paused here at two hours, six minutes and 31 seconds. And we're pausing right here to tell you that there's a better way to get that skin, that hair off your junk than burning it. Like Kane just did uh-huh. of course, we're talking about manscaped and listen, we're talking a lot about Paul bear and how you, he used to uh, knock the bottom out of undertaker's mom. I wonder if, if he was still with us, if Kane would be sending him a father's day gift friends, family, and loved ones. I bet you haven't purchased a father's day gift yet. Have you not to fear the leaders and below the waist grooming are here. Of course, I'm talking about our friends at Manscaped. They're saving the day yet again with the total package for the father figure in your life this year. It's time to upgrade his game from waist to face with this exclusive offer. Have him join the 8 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and get 20% off plus free shipping with the code WHW at manscaped.com. Let's start with the ultimate Father's Day MVP, the Performance Package 4.0, which I have it on good authority is what Paul Bear used to call his unit when he was diddling the Undertaker's mom. Now, inside the package, you'll find the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. It's got an LED light on it, so you can see in those dark places that the Undertaker's mom probably tried to take Paul Bear. You got the brand new Weed Whacker 2.0, the ear and nose hair trimmer. I have it on good authority that. Tony Schiavone uses that every week before he does his on cameras on AEW. The crop preserver ball deodor is responsible and perhaps single handedly responsible for changing the course of Tony Schiavone's life. You see, when he worked at Starbucks, he had stinky balls. He found out about Manscaped. They started endorsing our show here. He get, did one wipe with the crop preserver and a Jacksonville phone number appeared on his phone. His life was never the same. The crop reviver toner could have saved Eric Bischoff's job with Vince McMahon. The first time that Eric used the toilet at Titan offices, Vince could hear with his supersonic bionic billionaire hearing Eric Bischoff's old saggy balls hitting the toilet water. Whenever he'd take a plop, that was it. Had he got the toner in time, easy E would still be writing TV. Don't let this happen to you pick up the performance package 4.0. The performance boxer briefs are awesome. I know Tony Schiavone wears them whenever he's out there busting Excalibur's balls. And JR carries his weed vape in his travel bag with a free gift from right here at Manscaped. It's the shed travel bag 
It's a home run. JR's got it everywhere he goes. By the way, the Manscaped Beard Hedger Pro Kit has changed the game for fathers around the world. You probably take a look at Tony Schiavone's slick ass pencil beard and you wonder to yourself, self, how can I get a douche shaped beard like that? And the answer is the Beard Hedger Pro Kit. They can do cool beards or shitty ones like Tony's too. Mm. Now, inside of this offering, not only do you get the Beard Hedger trimmer, but you get the beard shampoo and conditioner so it doesn't smell like shit. It, you got beard oil, you got beard balm, and the two free gifts the beard comb and the scissors. Those little baby scissors are fantastic. Now, Tony uses little baby scissors to get them off his little wink wink, but I use them to keep it off my lips. Now, we all know that dads love their comfort. So if he's already got his grooming routine dialed in, hook him up with the Manscaped 2.0 boxers. Without a doubt, the best boxer a man could ever have. Whether he's mowing the lawn, whether he's taking out the trash, whether he's golfing in the sun, whether he's wrestling in an inferno match with the guy who is a result of Paul Bear banging your mom, these moisture wicking boxers will breathe without breaking a sweat, even if the goddamn ring's on fire. And Tony, as I understand it, we've got a special offer for guys who want to give their dad something special. And if you're getting together for Father's Day, listen, your sister is going to get your dad a tie. Your mom is going to get your dad like a gift card to Logan's. He don't want any of that, and he won't remember it next year. But he'll never forget that you, my son, were thinking about his dangly bits. Tony, tell him about our special offer. Let's not forget the crop mop before we give you the special offer, which is what I use all the time. Little individually wrapped wipes to freshen up anytime you want. I just got an order of three packets of them in the other day. So you can get 20% off and free shipping with the code WHW at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code WHW. Make this Father's Day one he won't forget, as Conrad said, with Manscaped. Let's do it. Let's get back to the program here. We just set a motherfucker on fire on pay per view. In two hours and six minutes, 30 seconds. I'll count us back in here in three, two, one play. visual tony listen it wasn't a great match necessarily but it was interesting it was a cool visual you got to give it that yeah and a great job by jr to sell it at the end too oh absolutely yeah just wonderful just but he used the word history in our organization so Mm. i thought i had a copyright on that well uh let's let's do some uh some some questions bad money slim says there are three women on this pay-per-view, not in a cage in the air, Luna, Sable, and Sonny. So F Mary kill, Tony, you got Luna, Sable, and Sonny. Go ahead. Give it to us. Okay. Uh, F, um, Sonny, mm. M Sable, mm. K Luna. K. Okay. Matthew podcast network says if you were backstage at WWE unforgiven 98, uh, would, would have you would have you to go there during, okay. I guess he's asking, would you go down and eat s'mores with the fire? That's actually an interesting question because we saw Lawler on camera holding up the dog, uh, the wieners, if you will, and, uh, some marshmallows. You think that would have been a cool way to sell it if he would have actually made the approach and actually done that? Well, it couldn't have made it any more sillier than it was. Right. Why not? Uh, Dan Michael says, Hey, who would you like to throw in the fire during that Inferno match? Is there a motherfucker in wrestling you'd like to set on fire besides Disco Inferno? Uh, no, not besides him. He's the one that needs to, needs to get burned. Uh, Adam Arpin says if dude love was in WCW 98, would he have been a better choice to end Goldberg streak? <laughs> I don't think so. 
Adam Leeson says if Tony, if Tony had stayed with the WWF, does he think he would have fit in well with the attitude era? Yes, I do. Because most people who know me know that I have an attitude. Oh, for sure. All the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, Christopher Hewitt says if Tony had no choice, but to be reincarnated as a toilet. (laughs) (laughs) This is already the best question. (laughs) Would he prefer Andre Vader, big show, Yokozuna or Kamala to evacuate their bowels onto him for a colonoscopy prep while they were watching the Inferno match. Wow, Chris, Chris Teresa, you, you are a sick motherfucker, and I love you. Thank you for listening to our show. Yeah. So, uh, who do you want to take a shit on you, Tony? Oh, God, I don't know. Big show, I guess. Well, going to be here a while. Uh, Brad Stanton says, Tony, did you ever meet Luna? What did you think of her character? Never. I don't remember meeting her. Maybe uh, I'm wrong. I, was she ever in WCW? No. Wait, no, she was, yeah, for, for Hiccup. Let me see. She was there for <laughs> Just like a minute. Yeah. Then I remember, I, I know I went and introduced myself to her and there was nothing that really stood out as far as just another, another lady. Yeah. 97. She was there very briefly okay. against Medusa. Okay. I remember that now. Uh, I love the phrasing here from our pal, Justin, Tony. Yep. Where are you at on setting motherfuckers on fire? I'm against it. Lee, uh, listen, uh, every now and again, we have some folks help us pick some questions and Derek picked one that made me laugh Mm -hmm. because the timing just would not work. Mm -hmm. And I want you to have whatever kind of answer you want. Okay. Lee says, (laughs) okay. How many women have you had sex with in the industry and what are their names and how many times? Uh, let, let me, let me ask that differently. Okay? okay. Here's, here's what Lee said. Okay. Hey, Tony, do you want to get divorced and have evidence of everything you've ever done wrong? I know you got in wrestling when you were already married, but if you don't mind for the sake of your fucking slap dick podcast, could you tell us all the people that you cheated on your wife with and how many times, okay. but specifically the ones where you were on the totem pole at work. And you were also risking not just your marriage, but your career. I'll hang up and listen. What the fuck? Uh, f- uh, f- that's from Lee. Yes. All right. Lee probably needs to crawl back in his hole. Uh, and number two, um, boy, I, sometimes I wonder, uh, about the language you use. We use on this program. We, we might need to clean some of it up, huh? Uh, no, I was just saying, uh, I guess Lee is one of these people that, enjoy the language we use on this program. I guess yeah. he's our target audience, right? He has to be. Yeah. God. Hey, if you don't mind, uh, Tony, could you tell us how many times you've cheated on your wife? I'll hang up. Yes. What the fuck? Come on, Lee. Uh, two count Kyle says, so Tony, what step was better? The inferno match or the orange mimosa match? The orange mimosa match was much better. Uh, Jeremy Strunk says, what is farting protocol in an inferno match? Guys that big, it seems like they could have a nice rip and it could have taken out the front row. Yeah. I would think that I don't even know if they were available back then, but I would think you would take a lot of charcoal tablets back then. Uh, Nick Jones says, Tony, have you seen the new season of Beavis and butthead fire, fire, fire? I have not. Or I believe as they would say fire, fire, fire. Uh, Dylan wants to know, uh, which does Tony like more this inferno match or the Judy Bagwell on a forklift match? I'd like the inferno match much better. Yeah. Judy Bagwell on a forklift. I don't know about that. I uh, know that's, that's was how low we sank. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, we're sitting if you're watching along with us, we're at two minutes, 13 seconds and 32 seconds. I so I'll get, let me try it again. Two hours, 13 minutes. And 38, 39, 40. This is dude love and a heel dude love. He was reintroduced on the very night that we saw Mr. McMahon, uh, pretend that he was going to wrestle Steve Austin in the main event. And that's the episode that brought, that broke the 83 week streak. And it's the reintroduction of the dude love character, but now here as a heel. So cactus Jack bouncing around being goofy to little to no reaction. They're going to have a good match and somehow an even better match a month later on pay-per-view. 
Tony, let's get to a stopping point here. You call it where to stop it. We'll take our last break and then we'll go home free with this last main event. Here's our last break. We go to uh, two hours, 14 minutes and 30 seconds to 1430 it comes up in five, four, three, two, one pause. And we're taking this time out to tell you about our friends at factor. Listen, it's the spring season and everybody is looking for quick and easy meals. So you can get outside and enjoy this better weather. You need something sort of on the go. Well, this is the way to go, man. Maybe you're too busy to cook this May, getting ready for June. I, I want to encourage you to try Factor. I've absolutely loved it. I've been using it for months now. I'm skipping the trips to the grocery store. I'm also skipping the chopping, the prepping, and the cleaning up too. What you're going to enjoy are Factor's fresh, never frozen meals that are ready in just two minutes. All you got to do is heat them and enjoy. That's it. And then get back outside and enjoy and soak up some of that warmer weather. Maybe you're looking for uh, a little beach body opportunity. How about the calorie conscious options? They got calorie smart meals that are 550 calories or less per serving. Maybe you're looking for that extra boost of energy. Well, try the protein plus options. You'll get up to 30 grams of protein or more in each and every serving. Now they've got stuff for everybody, man. Whether you're vegan and veggie, whether you're keto, it's all prepared by chefs. It's all approved by dietitians. It means it's got everything you need and nothing you don't need. I can't recommend it enough. It's delicious. It gets you out of a rut. What I mean is there's over 34 different chef prepared dietitian approved weekly options. There's always something new to try and you can round out your entire routine with snack supplies, even breakfast stuff, man, like apple cinnamon pancakes and bacon and cheddar egg bites. There's 45 different add-ons like this that include juices and shakes and smoothies. I think you'll dig it. One of the things I like is I don't have to wait. Even if I order takeout, well, first of all, this is better for you and it's a lot cheaper, but not only that, you can get it in two minutes. How do you beat that? And not only that, we should mention that you can now enjoy clean eating without the hassle. We're talking about how delicious it is, but it's better for you and it's fresh and it's flavor packed and there's no prep and there's no mess. How do you beat two minutes? Tony, I think we got a special offer right now. Conrad, head to factormeals.com slash WHW50 and use the code WHW50 to get 50% off your first box. Now that's code WHW50, WHW50, and that's one word, and that's at factormeals, that's F-A-C-T-O-R meals.com slash WHW50 to get 50% off your first box. Let's do it, man. Let's get back to the show here. We're at uh, two hours, 14 minutes and 30 seconds. It's Greensboro Coliseum. Stone Cold Steve Austin is about to stomp ass down to the ring here with the big Eagle championship, which debuted right after WrestleMania 14. And it's uh, the blue block version on blue leather to take on a man who's head to toe in blue dude. Love not cactus Jack, not mankind. But now heel dude love. I'm at two fourteen thirty. Here we go. And three, two, one, play. You got more faces than Mount Rushmore. First of all, you come out here, you knock Vince McMahon, then you apologize. First of all, you love Cactus Jack. Now you don't seem to like dude. Love. I said I was disappointed in him. That's all I said. I'm disappointed in his actions recently. How about you would say that to his face? Well, I'm disappointed. Is that an, an insult? Yes. Look at him, huh? Real, uh, real cool. That's cool. Oh, how Howard is ready, isn't he? Look at him. Look at awesome. the camera. Oh, do you see the Dixie flag in the back? Oh, I did. Wait a Yikes. What's that? McMahon might have already got Steve Austin. He might have already got him. He's 21,427, a Greensboro Coliseum record. I don't think would stand for this that. This is the crowd chanting. What could they do about it? Vince McMahon buy this whole building if he wants to. I guess he's Mr. North Carolina now, huh? Right. He's more famous than Jesse Helms, for goodness sakes. A lot richer, too. Who else you know that has Terry? How about that, man? Uh, what's that? No, I'm just saying, like. The way this crowd is, uh, just waiting in anticipation for him. Yes. Mm -hmm. What a star here he comes. What a star. Dude, just the swagger. Yep. 
It's unbelievable. Yep. You stumbled, didn't give a fuck. You just kept on going. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just, uh, the, that, that stars and bars in the back. Uh, I, I want to say something that rednecks are not really just all in the South. Okay. They're rednecks and everywhere. Well, listen, man, in this era, you had a whole bunch of silly folks who weren't uh, as evolved as we are now. Right. Who would say that that was just the rebel flag. I mean, yep. that was a uh, heels, you know, that was just, okay. we're anti-authority, right. blah, blah, yeah. blah. Right. And of course, later we were like, well, you know, that represents hate to a lot of people. It's like, oh, sure it does. And so the and, whole narrative changed. Right. The whole narrative changed. But I've, I've often been, because I've loved the South and you do too. We live here. We've lived here our entire lives. I've often been very pissed off about people who say the how the South is the only place full of hate and rednecks, and that's not the no. case. No, that is not the case. There's a lot of great people in the South, so I, I I take it. I really, and that's some of the things that that turn me off about Hollywood movies when they they try to make us look like yokel idiots. That's right. <clears throat> But anyway, so much for that. And here we go. And, uh, how long was it after this, that stone cold got hurt? You know, that you mean when, um, Owen Hart dumped when, him on his head. Yeah. Right. The prior August, he's wrestling here with a broken neck. Oh, he is. Oh, wow. Yeah. He's moving quite well with somebody, with a broken neck. Well, I mean, listen, it's bad, but it's not so bad. He can't work yet. That happens about 18 months after this at survivor series, he can't go anymore. So they hit that motherfucker with a car, which we've established. If you're bald and have a goatee in wrestling, they want to hit you with a car, whether you're Goldberg or you're Austin, like, let that be a, a lesson to you. If you're, if you're bald and have a goatee and they want to book you in a scene with a car, yeah. you will get hit. Huh. Why they, why do they keep showing the, the, the bell boy here? Because oh, right. you don't pay attention. Uh, no, we explained it at the top of the show. Okay. I remember. I Go we ahead. had, we had Vince McMahon saying that he was not going to screw stone cold, Steve Austin, but perhaps stone cold might screw stone cold. And as you may recall at survivor series, he pointed to the, uh, the, the, the bell ringer, the timekeeper, if you will, Mr. Mark Eaton. And he said, ring the bell. Oh, gotcha. So the idea is at any given point when it looks like, so for instance, there is a concern, I suppose yeah. uh -huh. that if, uh, Mick Foley were to apply any sort of submission move to stone cold, Steve Austin, they sure. could simply ring the bell and say, all right, dude loves the champ. Right. Okay. I get it. So let me ask you a question then. Why did they show him the timekeeper again? Because at any I, point, I, just, I, mean, I can tell him to ring the bell. Okay. Got it. What's Mark, where's Mark, what's, Mark what's, Eaton, by the way, was with this company for over oh, two decades and then yeah. they just fired him one day. Yeah. I'm sure they did. Uh, about 10 years ago, they were just like, yeah, we're tired of you. That's it. That's yeah. Not. They've, they've done a lot of people like that. I, uh, and I remember Mark Eaton back in 89. So wh what's the, the, the long tube here. Did you see how it kind of goes up to under the ring? Yes. What was that about? Was that where the fire came from? What do you think it was for dumbass? I don't know. It could be anything. Did you see a minute ago where they had the whole goddamn thing or engulfed in flames? Yes, I did. So that you was think where now, the now no. maybe for this match, they're just sending mimosa juice down there. No, maybe they ought to it pull it strange. out. That's what she said. Pull it out. Yeah. That would have been a good idea for you after kid number nine. <laughs> Look, he could take a bump oh, on the of concrete. Oh God. What is, what was wrong with him? That's more dangerous than the fire. Yeah, it sure is. And now you know why Mick can barely get around now. Splat, son. Speaking of people who got shown the door for no reason, there's Mike Kyoto from adfreeshows.com. Mm -hmm. Listen yeah. to the replay. Tell me he broke his fall. Oh. I don't think so. Maybe he broke his back. And now I My goodness. Mm -hmm. Uh, these guys are going to go 18 minutes and 52 seconds. Meltzer would say an incredible performance of bump taking by dude. Love carried this and Austin's timing was good as well. The highlight was dude selling us some great clotheslines in the ring and crazy bumps out of it. Dude took a hip toss off the stage onto the floor and Austin basically kicked him back into the ring. Mm. So ultimately it gets four stars. Mm. Meltzer really dug it. Um, 
but as if that's not enough, they do a rematch the following month and it's somehow even better than this one. Wow. The readers of the wrestling observer though, did not love it. It only got 31.1% thumbs up mm-hmm. 41.7% thumbs down 27.2% thumbs in the middle. As far as the best match poll, it wasn't close. Austin and dude love got 77 votes. Undertaker and King got 15 votes. Ooh. The worst match people thought was Midnight Express versus the Rock and Roll Express, followed mm-hmm. by Stable and Luna, followed by Farouk Shamrock and Blackman taking on Henry Brown and Mustafa, and then LOD and uh, New Age Outlaws. The idea that anybody could say Sable and Luna was anything other than a classic is offensive and hurtful yeah. and untrue. Right. It was a classic. I agree on all fronts. Classic. Classic. Yeah, this is a, this is a very good match. And, and, and it goes back to, to my thought. And that is, you know, Austin was the persona was incredible. Never be another one like him stone cold, but the guy could freaking work too. And, and I think sometimes we overlook the fact that how good of a worker he was and overlook the fact of, because of the gimmick. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I knew that when he was stunning Steve Austin. And the Hollywood blondes back then, man, the kid could go. So that's another thing got to take into consideration to make Austin so great. And of course said, you know, the same thing can be applied to Mick Foley. Oh God. For as big as he was, I mean, he was never one of these in, in shape guys. I mean, he could do a lot of great stuff. And of course he was out of his freaking mind too. No doubt. And, uh, that all led to a great bevy of bizarre characters that he became throughout his career. Just we should, we should talk about, uh, where you think Foley ranks like on the all time list of workers performers. Yeah. Just as far as in ring performers, personas in the business, just participants in the wrestling industry. Like I have to admit, even before, uh, I started working with him on the podcast. I sort of came around and, and thought, you know, a lot of people should have him on their Mount Rushmore. Like mm-hmm. the dude was the funniest commissioner, right? He did fine at color commentary. Uh-huh. He was a good GM. He was a great, he wrote great books. Now he does great podcasts. He does incredible one man shows, right? He pulled off uh, a, a baby face, you know, boyhood dream character that most people would have thought never had a chance and dude love. Uh-huh. He gave it a hardened edge. He got over a crazy, maniacal, sadistic cactus jack. Uh-huh. He did the crazy deathmatch stuff. And then he did, you know, really feel good stuff with, uh, with some of his other work. And then Mick Foley and Halt, this is your life. And the pairing with Austin and the pairing with rock. And then just the mankind character, one set of entrance music, another set of exit, pulling his own hair out, a mandible claw. Like the dude could you know, wrestle the undertaker or Shawn Michaels or mill Mascaris. And he was willing to do whatever. And you've talked a lot about how, you know, kids these days are taking too many risks and blah, blah, blah. Maybe there's no better example of that than Mick Foley, who did all of that craziness in his twenties and like very, very early thirties. Yeah. Uh, but I, I I've come around on him. Maybe if he, even if he's not in your Mount Rushmore, he's gotta be top 10 all time contributor to wrestling now. Yeah, top ten. If if you talk about contributors to wrestling, he is top ten. Yes. Uh, it's funny we always talk about the Mount Rushmore. Well, you have to define your Mount Rushmore. Yes. Best workers, best promo, best all time, uh, best longevity. Um, I, it's just it's very very hard to do that. Uh, and now we see Mister McMahon coming out, which and he just walked out very very calmly. Yep. Just like he did with, uh, uh, at survivor series. See, he's taking his seat. He nodded to the timekeeper. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the timekeeper, Mark Eaton, he's got that hammer in hand, ready to ring that bell because this is a submission move. Yeah. Just like we teased by the way, since we're talking about wrestling, I feel like we should at least acknowledge that last night. Mm-hmm. During wrestling con six from rocket city championship wrestling on a show where sin Bodhi kiz Arnie was there on a show where Dalton castle and the boys were there uh-huh. on a show where action. Mike Jackson, Mr. Alabama himself did the rope walk all the way around the ring. 
the main event was the battle Royale where less than halfway through making her professional wrestling in ring debut, Miss big booty, Judy, it was her. And I believe like 19 dudes. And when it was all said and done, Uh she outlasted them all. She won her very first match. She won the battle Royal Tony. Is that her name in the ring? Big booty, Judy. That's her gimmick name. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like on her driver's license. I know that. Yeah. Well, that's, I'm, I'm very proud of her. Now she may have a new gimmick because the ring announcer went our next entrant into the battle Royale is big, big booty, Judy. So I think she's big, big booty, Judy, big, big booty, Judy. double big. Okay. Her finish. She like points to her ass, slaps yep. it a couple of times and then slams it into the guy's head. And wow. she was slamming that ass around. And she even said, you want that ass? And then bam, nailed him. We'll, uh, we'll get some photos over to, um, to Wesley so you can add them in post for us. But yeah, she got her hand raised. She got the dub. She looked like an American gladiator, uh, and had professional looking gear, man. Good for her. And one big night. Wow. That's great. That and is- it was, it was sold out. She had her own cheering session. Oh, I bet. Yeah. I was trying to get some, uh, Judy chance going and Clint from her. She was trying to be helpful, but. Those CrossFit fucks who were there to help cheer her on. They didn't know what the fuck we were doing. Yeah. It's like, come on guys, get with it. There was a fun moment where one guy's choking the shit out of Judy and Cassio oh. is trying to film it, but he realizes, Hey man, there's a dude choking my wife right there. <laughs> and he yells, let her go. <laughs> it was so good. He would have loved it. We sure could have made it. Yeah, I'll get the footage over to QT Marshall. We'll try to get her over to the Nightmare Factory. I'm sure she'll be on uh, on Collision or Rampage or Dynamite by the end of the year. Be a good time. You never know. Oh, that reminded me. <laughs> I can see the wheels turning, and I know it's not in a good way. You're like, oh, fuck, I forgot I got a blah, blah, blah. Yes. Shit. <laughs> Fuck me running. Damn it. Fuck me running in a in an evening gown with flames coming out of my ass. That's a great question. Would you rather be in an evening gown match or an inferno <laughs> match? Uh an evening gown match. I ain't I ain't fucking no fire. I ain't fucking with no fire. A new t-shirt available now at lowestrolls.com. Of course we're kidding, but, uh, Hey, it is Memorial day weekend this weekend. Please don't go mm-hmm. fucking around with no fire. Please don't. We would like, if you're listening to this program, we sure would appreciate if you could come back with all your fingers. Yes. And as I understand it, some of you rednecks up in, uh, Craigsville, West Virginia, y'all used to shoot bottle rockets out of your toes. Is that right? Do I have that I- right? Never spent that much time in Craigsville, West Virginia, but in Craigsville, Virginia, where I'm from, Bottle Rock, uh, we did a lot of crazy shit. You ever shoot one out of a guy's b hole? No, no. You know, uh, old Steve O, he used to shoot uh, fireworks out of his b hole. Well, Steve O's pretty, as we know, out of his freaking mind. Yes. Was, at least. I guess he's cleaned up a little bit, right? Yeah, of course. But he did some of the craziest shit ever on when Jackass first came out. Remember that one time where he took a, a fish hook, big fish hook and put it in his jaw. I I do not, but that sounds like something he would do. Good God. Hey, I wanted to ask you, um, what is your routine in Vegas? Like you and I have been fortunate enough to hang out in Vegas a few times. And I'm just wondering like this weekend. Okay. So you're going to cruise out there. Tuesday night. Uh, as people are listening to this, you were there last night. All right. And, and you're, you're going to hang out and get into some shenanigans. What, what is your Tuesday night before TV on Wednesday night in Las Vegas look like going straight to bed. Okay. Now on Wednesday, you're going to work. Uh-huh. But then on Thursday, you're going to have a free day. No, I'm uh, Wednesday night. I'm flying back home on the red eye. Oh, okay. So you'll be home Thursday and hang out with biggity bug. 
Yes. And my granddaughter, Lizzie, has her high school graduation on Thursday. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. So that's why I'm flying back. And I'm not flying back in till Sunday morning to Las Vegas. Okay. Well, so you'll be home Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night. Right. Wow. So what are y'all going to do Memorial Day weekend at the Shivani household? Uh, probably nothing. Okay. Uh, and then I, then I, but when I fly back to Las Vegas on Sunday morning, I will stay in Las Vegas Monday and then Tuesday fly to San Diego because we got a, uh, a show on San Diego the following Wednesday. Hey, hypothetically. Oh, fuck. Oh, oh, oh he hit. That was bad. The meat of the legs on the corner of the steps. Yep. Yeah. Real bad. Worst bruises ever. I'm sure. Oh my God. He's he crawling he's, away. He's, Show a replay. Why are we not showing a replay of that? Oh, I have no idea. Between the, the top getting thrown off the stage. Yeah. Almost said tossed off the stage, but that means something different. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, oh, dude. He is the original Darby Allen. Yes. Yes. Uh. I'm I'm surprised he didn't get lacerated. Yeah, you feel like it was. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, dude! Oh, oh, he broke his fall. My butt. <laughs> right there, big move, big big move there by Dude Love. And again, that's gonna buy him some time. Dude, how crazy is that? Jr. With he broke his fall. My butt. <laughs> I like it. It's crazy. He took so many crazy risks and bumps. Oh God. And he probably called, I'm sure he called that spot, you know, take me over there and suplex me on the stairs. Oh, now he's going to warm up the band. Is that what he's doing here? Yes. Okay. See what he would do. Cause you know, the, the story of the dude love character ref bump. Is that he didn't imagine as the story comes out, he was having his, uh, match at mind games or, or getting ready for his match at mind games mm-hmm. with, uh, with Sean Michaels. Right. And Sean really enjoyed working with him and his style, this crazy madman, blah, 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 violent, yada, yada, yada. And so Sean asks, Hey, is this the way you always envisioned your character, your, your wrestling career? And he goes, no, actually, Sean, I thought I would be you. Right. And Bruce overhears this and hears that when he was a kid, he used to get a video camera and cut promos and stuff and have fun acting like he was a character named dude love. And so now he would have some stuff that's gimmick named like that was normally the mandible claw when mankind did it. Right. But when dude love does it, you're going to love this. It's called the love handle. <laughs> And when he's tuning up the band in the corner, like Shawn Michaels would, uh-huh. of course you can look at him and think, well, he's probably not going to be able to execute a super kick as well as Shawn Michaels. Sean called his sweet chin music. All right. Nick called his sweet shin music <laughs> and he would kick the guy in the shin and uh-huh. years later, orange Cassidy would rip it off. Uh, not really. Cause orange Cassidy's doing it to be funny. And it's great, but I'm saying, uh, Mick Foley kicks you in the shin and then DDTs you. Right. Like, you know, to set up much like the whole, uh, Austin stunner thing where you kick them. So take a look at what we're going to see here. Dude. Love has the chair. Yeah. Lordy. Oh man. I paused it. Excellent. <laughs> So mankind is doing what he can, or, um, Mick Foley is doing what he can to attack. Oh, someone called Steve Austin. Oh, right on the top of the head of Vince McMahon. You want to talk about a big time chair shot, son? That's huge. He swung it like a baseball bat mm. waiting on him to turn around. And there it comes the big stunner. <laughs> Oh, 
that was a hell of a chair shot swinging it like a baseball bat. You don't see that very often. Uh uh-uh. uh. Funny, I don't know if you saw it. Bischoff is predictable. Was I saw that? I'm thinking, oh God, there's always got to be someone who just hates the other side for no freaking reason. We got him too. So, uh, now there was no referee to count here. Hmm. So there's more to this story, right? Yeah. I mean, the deal is they weren't really caught up on that too much. They're, it's all story. This is the, the Russo era. Uh, would say, even though there was no ref Austin's music simply played to signify the end of the stage play. They spent what appeared to be 15 minutes loading the unconscious McMahon who appeared on television the next night, not even selling an injury to end the television show. But the announcement made as to the finish was that Austin was disqualified for hitting a WWF official four stars. So, you know, they're playing the music because listen, he's victorious in the fight, but he didn't win the match because you can't hit a WWF official. You can't hit the referees. You can't hit the owner you can't hit the boss, but he's selling like he's dead. I mean, and I guess that's the way you're supposed to sell it. That's the way you're going to be. I mean, if, uh, if Britt Baker ever took mercy on you, yeah, put over your dude love, that's the way you'd be selling after just dead, just dead. Yeah. Well, what'd you think, man? You saw saw an evening gown match. Yeah. You saw the midnight express that you didn't know existed against the rock and roll express and the Greensboro Coliseum. And you saw dude love saw some crazy stunts. Double J sing. Saw a guy get set on fucking fire. Yep. And, uh, you told us that Darby Allen, here's a spoiler is going to win the world title mm. this weekend on pay-per-view. Yeah. I guess I'll let the kid out of the bag on that one. Didn't I? You did. You know, I hope, I hope, uh, Tony doesn't go into a tailspin and have to change the finish now. Yeah. Probably not. I'm just going to bet the farm and blame you if it doesn't go my way. You Please know? blame me. Here's the swing again. It's a hell of a crack. Was it intentional? Yeah. Oh, what do you think? He may have been swinging at dude low. Oh, come on, give me a break. Man. I and think when, I think, uh, <laughs> it was the really, the top of the chair, which is really the solid part of the chair. That's not where you want to get hit with the shit. No, 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 not at all. I'd prefer the center if I could. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not at all. You know, as a rule of thumb, right. I don't like when people come into the uh, mortgage company there and they come around my desk and they whack me over the head with a chair. Like that's less than ideal. Yeah. I'd love to see that. Well, you never would. It would require you to show up Uh, and you don't show up for big booty Judy's in ring debut or my Mm -hmm. wedding. I would just show up for a chair shot. Well, I'm a busy man. I got a, I got a, I got a dog that limps around and I got to stay with him and a wife that limps around my boy. Stay with her too. We're going to be limping around next week. We're going to be talking about June 4th, 1988, kicking an old school from 35 years ago. Dusty Rhodes has returned. Barry Windham is the new U S champ. It's the second clash in four days. And, uh, Arn and Tully are in the main event, all that and more next week here on WHW Monday. Fight Plus is the ultimate digital platform for live sports and entertainment, and they're now offering a free seven-day trial at TryFight.com. Fight Plus is packed with a premium live event schedule, over a 1,000 hours of live action every year, and a library of more than 4,000 hours on demand, plus exclusive content you can't get anywhere else. Fight is a great partner of ours. They support us, so let's support them. Give that free seven-day trial a shot, and you'll be a member for life. That's tryfight.com. T R Y F I T E dot com. As you heard, tomorrow night, if you're listening to this early and ad free, why not do an Ask Tony anything? We will record it. So if you're listening to this on Wednesday, it's a little QA, a little bonus action over at adfreeshows.com. By the way, if your business targets men 25 to 54 years old, there's no better place to advertise than right here with us on what happened when. You've heard some of the same ads from the same companies over and over and over. Want to know why? Because it really works. Yep. Go right now to advertise with whw.com. That's advertise with whw.com. 
and keep up with us on social. It's at WHW Monday on Twitter and Facebook at WHW podcast on Instagram. And I'd love to have your like your subscription. Hey, turn on the notifications bell for our YouTube. It's WHW on youtube.com and be sure to check out loisrules.com. We've got all your favorite swag and merch over there, including the Andre hog meat money shirt, the old school Shivani shirt. How about the tape ruler shirt? We used to do tape early routines on here all the time. And then Tony got tired of having fun and turning his lights on or not turning off his headsets or running his dog's head into the deal. Who knows? Uh, that'll do it for us this week. Tony right now, it looks like it's about that time. Yeah. Standing in the ring, ladies and gentlemen, is Conrad Thompson awaiting his next match. And as Conrad stands in the ring, coming down to the ring is his opponent. It's big booty Judy. And she's going to hit him with her ass bump. I guess that's what she thought, but no, wait a minute. Coming from behind, wielding the chair. It is my dog, Bug, and he hits him in the head with the chair and knocks his ass out, and that's what you get for screwing around with my dog, you Alabama bitch. We're desperately out of time. See you next week on What Happened When. We come to you Wednesdays on Western One, but Mondays we come to you exclusively and ad-free on... Patreon, patreon.com forward slash WSW Monday. And of course, ad free shows.com. Bite him in the ass, bug. Bite him in the ass. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson with SaveWithConrad.com. You've heard me bragging on the podcast for years about helping people save money on their current house. But did you know that I can help you with your next house as well? That's right, we can get you into your next house with zero down. No money down loan programs are still available, and I know it sounds too good to be true, but we can do it for you. And by the way, home ownership is more affordable than you might think. We routinely turn renters into homeowners, and we hear back that their new house payment is more affordable than what they were paying in rent. Why would you keep doing that? Stop throwing your money away, paying for someone else's mortgage, and start building wealth for your family. And let my family help at SaveWithConrad.com. You don't need perfect credit to do this. We can improve credit scores down to the 500s. And it's worth mentioning, we never say no. We say not yet, but here's how. You need a game plan to buy a house, and that's where we come in at SaveWithConrad.com. We'll ask you, what down payment do you want to make? And zero is an acceptable answer. And what monthly payment do you want? And then it's time to go shopping. Find out how easy it is and how affordable it is to become a homeowner at SaveWithConrad.com.